Everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Jasper's Game Week here on Hearthsinger Games. I'm Ann Richmond, aka Hearthsinger, the head bard in charge around these parts. Uh, and today I have the uh, inimitable pleasure uh, to be playing Starfinder yeah. again with all of these people. And before we get started, I just wanted to remind everybody that there's a reason why we're here. There's a reason why we have gathered in the hallowed halls of Paizo storytelling. Uh, and it's because we are raising money for Jasper's Game Day. Uh, Jasper's Game, Ga Game Day is a 501c3 charity devoted to promoting suicide prevention efforts and awareness. They take every cent that is raised here and make sure it gets into life saving hands. Um, they do the work uh, that comes before saving someone's life so that we don't have to deal with the devastating after aftermath. Um, there are so many people in involved in this event who have been profoundly touched uh, by suicide and simply by the fact that we can all uh, get together, uh, tell some stories, and, and share, share, the e share in the effort uh, made. And we have received so many incredible uh, messages and obviously some very generous donations. Uh, and the buck doesn't stop there, everybody. Uh, these donations have the ability to affect the fates of our fair crew here uh, in, in fantasy space. So uh, if you are curious to know how you can do that, go ahead and write exclamation point donate in chat. It will pull up a whole menu uh, of, of items a la carte, which you can specify when you make your donation on Tiltify, and the link will come up as well. And that's enough for me. I'm going to pass it on to our fantastic GM. Adam Kelly. Take it away, Adam. Thanks, Ann. Um, how are y'all doing tonight? I've been looking forward to this for a while. Uh, in fact, I've been so looking forward to it. I need this because I've spent the last week in jury duty just stressing about whether or not this was going to make it, if I was going to make it to this or not. And uh, here we are. And I, so I need this just to to unwind from that nonsense that was there. Um, so I just wanted to go around the table and kind of introduce everybody that's here. Um, my name is Adam and I am the GM for the Southern Tomfoolery Network. Uh, we are a Starfinder podcast. Um, we're currently doing Against the Aeon Throne into Signal of Screams into D Devastation Arc and about to launch a second show doing Fly Free or Die. Uh, really looking forward to that. Um, but I have some other great folks around the table, so I'm going to just kind of go around how it looks like to me on the Zoom call. I'm not sure how it looks to you, but we're going to start with Alex. Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> I'm Alex. Uh, I live in Baltimore. I'm a big fan of the Southern Tom Foolery uh, podcast, and when I saw Adam was running a game and uh, we had a chance to play with him, I jumped on it, and, and here I am now. You made it. You did it. Yep. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. What about you, Michelle? Hello. Uh, my name is Michelle Winfragley. Um, you can find me on the internet at I am Chubby Bunny on Instagram and Twitter. Um, you can also find me every Wednesday on Paizo's official Twitch channel. Uh, we have a show called Scoured Stars where I play this exact same character, Maple, because making character sheets is really hard. And also <laughs> she's a good bugo and I wanted to play her again. Um, that's Wednesdays at uh, uh, 6, 6 to 10 p.m. Pacific, I remember now. I'm also a cast member of Hunter's Entertainment, which on Tuesday nights we do zombie games for three hours and it's incredibly stressful. I already died once and I had to make a whole new character. <laughs> I think three of, our, three of our players have all died once and it's been like a whole thing. As anyway, I'm really, tradition. yeah, it, as a tradition <laughs> in the zombie world. Um, I'm super excited to be here and uh, yeah, that's it for me, continue. All right, thank you. Uh, Irene, why don't you go next? Okay, hi. Um, my name is uh, Irene Campos. Uh, you can call me a ring, it's fine. <laughs> uh, I'm from Costa Rica and I'm an artist. I do a lot of fantasy art and sci fi art. And I am also in a um, Starfinder podcast in Spanish. Uh, and same as Michelle, because characters are hard to do. <laughs> my <laughs> character from my podcast, Lazar y Dragones, is going to be playing here. And she's a half draw mechanic. So, well, I hope I don't 
kill off y'all's main characters here tonight. <laughs> That's a good That'd move establishing plot armor now. <laughs> yeah, let's go. So, yeah, I see. Yeah. I do want to let you guys know that on uh, on screen there is art that Irene did of oh, really? our entire crew. <laughs> yes, that's um, really great. So I had to I had to celebrate it and put it here uh, so that people didn't miss out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, next we got Chris. How you doing tonight? I'm doing good. Thanks. I'm Chris Rooney. I live in Kansas City. Um, I'm never played Pathfinder before. I'm here to support Jasper's game day, and I'll be playing Wisp, the Android operative. Excellent, excellent. Glad to have you at the table, Chris. Uh, Ellie, how are you doing tonight? I am doing pretty good. Um, so I'm Ellie. I listen to entirely too many podcasts. Some of you I've already <laughs> heard, but mostly heard before. Um, and tonight I will be playing Alice, who is a Morlema Solarian. Excellent. excellent. Yes, Solarian. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got excited. No, I, I, I got, I'm sorry. Solarian is a, is a fantastic class. I, I love the Solarian. Um, I think that most of you here know Anne, but I would be remiss not to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself, Anne. So. <laughs> sure. Uh, I'll keep it short and sweet, guys. This, as you know, is is my channel. You can come here for all things TTRPG goodness. I do a lot of podcasts and discussions and miniature painting and uh, actual plays in terms of Starfinder. Uh, some of you may know me as the former technical director over at Androids and Aliens when we were still uh, in the Glass Cannon Network studio. Or you might know me from uh, my Nordic Horror podcast uh, with some of my friends from Glass Cannon Network uh, called The Lost Mountain Saga. Or you may, in fact, know me from Star Found, mm. from this very channel, uh, where we play shockingly Starfinder, <laughs> uh, and and those are really the places you probably know me from. <laughs> well, I just want to say to you, and thank you for hosting this uh, the the Paizo verse here at Jasper's. Uh, you've been doing a great job all weekend, and oh, thank you. Uh, I hope you have a good time tonight playing some Starfinder. Um, it would be impossible not to. <laughs> Well, let's get into it then. Let's kind of set this up. Um, so tonight we're going to be playing uh, Into the Vescarium, which is a Starfinder Society scenario. Um, it's a really fun group of adventures. And the basic setup here is that the Vescarium, uh, if you didn't know, is the star system for the mighty fearsome Vesk. Um, they are a stellar civilization of conquest founded by the Vesk and have long been an enemy of the Pact Worlds. However, when the Swarm unexpectedly attacked both civilizations, the Pact Worlds and the Vescarium decided to become friends in the face of a common enemy. Um, so, since then, there's been some semi-cordial relations, you know. Uh, they still are a conquesting civilization after all, but things have stayed pretty peaceful and a lot of that has to do with the Starfinder Society, which you are all a part of. So thanks to the Society's most recent successes with this diplomatic um, relations, the Vescarium has finally agreed to allow select teams of Starfinder agents to perform missions of archaeological investigation and exploration on its planets. So we are heading into the Vescarium. But to start, we're going to be on a starship uh, in route to this star system. And I just want to have kind of a moment to have your characters introduce themselves. We're gonna go backwards around the table this time. So we're gonna start with you, Anne. What, who do we see in the in the common area on the starship? Sure, um, you see a uh, moderately sized, you know what, we'll make her, we'll make her kind of scrawny, a scrawny but scrappy Lashunta um, wearing a purple and hot pink kind of cropped coat uh, and very um, kind of like mechs, uh, mechs, mesh mixed with patches, uh, like baggy pants. Um, she is, uh, as a Lashunta, has two little like proboscis on the front of her forehead uh, with little purple glows at the tips of them. She has kind of purple facial markings and her hair is just uh, neon green. She has one of those uh, kind of like side shave things going on uh, with star and celestial tattoos um, marked into her kind of teal skin. And she is currently um, knocking back an entire very sugary space soda. 
<laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, all right, let's go back. I think Ellie, you would be next. All right, so for Alice, um, you all see a very full-bodied uh, Morlama, which is almost like a walrus people. She is a purple and pink um, skinned, um, and she's wearing kind of like not quite formal wear, but definitely business wear um, when she's on the starship. Um, and she has her nails done. They're a very nice shade of magenta. And her tusks, which she has four tusks, they are all, they've got a spiral that's like silver that goes down the tusk. Um, and she's trying to fairly carefully go through the hallway. Occasionally you'll notice like she'll go too fast and then she'll be like, oh no, that's not what I'm, and like almost run someone over. So she's trying to very carefully make her way without just plowing through people. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Chris, we're gonna go to you. Who do we see in the starship? Um, Wisp is an android, um, you know, kind of aver average height, but it's unclear what gender, um, very pale skin, green hair, close cropped, and you can see the green circuitry underneath their skin. Um, they've only been in their body for 12 years, but the body itself is considerably older than that. Um, it was built for corporate espionage, so it has stealth tech buried within it that enables their operative abilities. And they have a uh, insatiable desire to experience uh, life in the universe. So uh, both biological and cultural diversity, uh, they want to learn everything they can. Well, you're on the right mission for that. I'll tell you that. Um, all right, next up we have Irene. Okay, um, Triel is um, half draw. Uh, she's a mechanic. Uh, she has um, like light purple skin and very messy white hair and red eyes. Uh, she is very young. She's probably about uh, 19 years old. And she's using like skin tight armor, red armor. She is very flashy in the way she presents herself. And she's using a jacket with the free captain's um, logo on, on the back. Nice. And she has a companion, her combat drone, and his name is Gerti, and he is like a very, very big <laughs> pink robot <laughs> that <laughs> looks a lot like a toy robot, but very big. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. And it's urge to hug rising. I know. I know. <laughs> and so he's this... full like of um, stickers on him. <laughs> yes. And so that that is art that uh, you drew, right? Just yeah, a quick plug yeah. for your for your artwork there because it's incredible. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, Michelle, tell us a little bit about Maple. Um, so Maple is a uh, decimar. Um, decimar are basically butterfly people. Uh, they have four arms. They have large antenna, which they use to sense and do uh, low light vision. Um, they are also very uh, fragile and like average height and like five five ish. Uh, and some change. Uh, Maple has uh, looks like very cool, like me. And um, Maple is currently <clears throat> also I'm a witch warper, so I have sort of like very specific uh, interdimensional abilities, um, <laughs> but I don't like to talk about it. Um, but I use them. So uh, in this common room, I'm currently trying to like customize my chair because I don't want anyone else to sit in it. And I'm just being very like, this is my space. Please do not cross this line. I am trying to make this look nice. And I just, I'm so tired of being on the ship. It is taking like forever to get to where we're going. <laughs> driving me insane. Excellent. All right, Alex, uh, what about uh, Burdock? Burdock is a, a little Raxel. He's a Raxelite um, in flowering phase. Um, in case that wasn't evident. Um, <laughs> Burdock, uh, wants to be a celebrity chef and hitchhiker. And so exploring different planets is exactly what he wants to do. Learning how to cook with uh, local ingredients, you know, locally sourced jellies and jams, um, plant, animal, mineral, whatever, you know, he'll photosynthesize if he needs to. Uh, but every, every mission is a new uh, opportunity. Excellent. Well, we've got quite a varied crew here. Um, it was really fun getting all these characters as they were coming in because they're all just like very unique and they all have this kind of neon vibe to them 
um, which is yeah. just so great Starfinder fodder, you know. So I would I would describe us as a high viz party. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. sure. <laughs> uh, well, while you're waiting for something to happen, Maple, you do get uh, a little communications um, signal pops up uh, in your computers, um, and this is coming from the starfinder society and from the captain that you guys are kind of dealing with uh the venture captain and i will show you this message that comes out and i'll take a volunteer for who would like to read the message to the class i'll do it excellent thank you alex um there you go so you might want to press that little magnifying glass because it's quite small. yes i do yeah uh, so this is coming from venture captain niaj who is the uh, is your contact for the Starfinder Society and is the one that sent you on this mission. <clears throat> As a result of recent improvements to our relationship with Viscarium leadership, the Council of Despots has afforded us the privilege of surveying previously restricted locations for our mutual benefit. One such location includes the famous submerged ruins of Trafodi on Vesk 2. Take the attached clearance forms and report to the Antiquities and Histories offices of Command 2. From there, an archaeological expert will escort you on a sanctioned tour of some of the ruins. This is a straightforward trip, but please ensure that you keep your heads about you and do your best to foster a diplomatic dialogue. All right. So Tvesk 2 is the first planet that we're going to head towards. Um, and so, yeah, that, that message gets out to you guys as a crew. I don't know if uh, you guys have any responses to that as you're kind of coming in to the planet's atmosphere. Oh, it said it's like our ruin. Do you think it means it's going to be like real dirty or like what is this exactly? Submerged. Oh, Maybe so it like, gets cleaned on a tidal basis. So it's like wet and old. Oh, my God. This is going to be it's going to be a whole thing. I just like kind of feel like misled, I guess. I thought you're going somewhere sick and cool and awesome. We might get sick. <laughs> I mean, I wish I didn't find that hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if my drone is going to be able to swim if we're going to be submerged, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out one way or the other. Life is about a ring experiences collecting them one by one is just a new uh hurtful experience for your drone friend well i mean it's previously previously restricted so this is uh exclusive oh my god i do love exclusive parties maple come on i mean i 100 percent agree and i think that we should get some like really good selfies when we get down there because like no one else is gonna have that geotag and we're gonna be like the first ones on that it's very exciting for me Oh, I'm on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They I will like and subscribe. Like a, <laughs> I'm kind of flying under the radar right now, but like okay. I think with a little bit of makeup and a new name, I don't know. Maybe I just need a new social profile, but I feel like maybe you could help me with that. Yeah, you just need like an alternate, right? An alternate yeah. profile. You're doing like a Banksy thing, whatever space yeah, Banksy is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Spanksy. <laughs> there we go. You got it. Yeah, got in one. Yeah. yeah. Spanksy 01, because there was already one. Okay. I mean, you yeah. could do two, but it's fine. That would just make it seem like a copycat. Or, or I could be like Spanksy 69. Is that too much? Um, I, I think much. you are going into a territory we do not want to go into right now. There's not like a lot of You're time right. to explain right. to you, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Spanksy 007. I think it's classic. Yes, and references that famous <clears throat> Android. 007. Yeah. It's very sneaky yeah, and cool. It's a good designation. Yeah. Solid designation. Yeah. All right. Let's stick with that. So yeah. um, you All make right. that account, and I will be there to help you with overlays in like just a second. Awesome. I go into my uh, brain computer, and I begin making my <laughs> – into my mind palace. There you go. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Um, <laughs> uh, so as you arrive at Vest 2, you were given a contact to meet um, to – it's a local archaeologist uh, by the name of Jelber Jelbern Jell Skittich. So you can just go call her Jell if you want, yeah, or JJ, whatever whatever works for you. Um, and they want uh, the Starfinder Society wants you to rendezvous with Jell 
uh, to survey the Trafodi Sea's ruins, gathering as much data as possible while you're there. So when you land, you're able to kind of easily navigate yourselves to an administrative complex within Command 2. Um, and inside, a receptionist asks you to wait while their escort finishes their current meeting. Um, after a few moments, uh, you see a VESC come out of an office that looks like this. Got a little handout for you there. Um, and she's like, just got like a, 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 like a whole armful of forms that are just spilling over her arms, like just a disarray of various forms that she's having to sign to get through the, the bureaucracy of, of doing these archeological digs. And she, she looks maybe a little stressed, but just very jovial nonetheless, um, and glad to see you. And she actually uh, ushers you outside um, to a very roomy, hover vehicle that she has set up and uh, allowing you guys to all kind of strap in and head out to the seas. Um, there's plenty of room for the, for the six of you and, and the drone. Um, it's a tight fit, but you all can get in there. You know, is there a booster seat? <laughs> there's a booster seat for both the racks light and the drone. Okay. Um, you know, and Alice is kind of sitting on the back. A little bit you know <laughs> <laughs> kind of riding riding high on the ledge there um and so as this uh let's see here as the um hover as the hovercraft glides over the clear water the vesk finally like relaxes um and takes a moment to just breathe and she begins to speak and she says <clears throat> I hate all the bureaucratic garbage they force on me, especially meetings and paperwork. I'd rather be out here in the field. And she gestures towards islands in the distance. Welcome to the real Vesk 2. Beautiful views as far as you can see and a climate perfect for days spent on the beach rather than in an office. Ruins practically cover the planet. Some of them are in better shape than others, but... They all hold mysteries of the past. She smiles and looks to the horizon. I remember once when I was surveying on Kilty when, oh, and she curses as the hovercraft bumps against the sandbar just under the water's surface. <laughs> she refocuses, steers around the obstruction. Oh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, I get to telling stories and well, sometimes they get to me, you know? <laughs> Uh, so about the ruins on Trafodi, uh, I've spent years exploring them, but there's so much I haven't discovered. They're structurally similar to other sites, but nearby radiation levels are unusually high. I'd love to get my hands on the technology you Starfinders have access to and take another crack at those ruins. Uh, she excitedly punches a few buttons to set the hovercraft into autopilot, then turns to fully face her passengers and grins. All right. Now we can chat without wrecking the ride. Um, and so at this point, you know, you can ask her any questions. Um, you, we can do some culture recall knowledge if you want. I don't know if any of yeah. you have a profession, I'd, archaeologist or farmer. There's lots of options here. I'd love to culture check. Mm. All right. By all means, let's, let's get our first roll of the evening here. Yay. And, and I also have, I can add my expertise die to it. So I'll add a D6. All right. Sounds great. Oh yeah. Oh, it's oh, it's real good, guys. Uh, it is a thirty. A thirty. Oh, all, right. all right. Yeah, that's uh. So that it's dirty. Yeah, <laughs> is dirty thirty. Is it all the way dirty thirty? All right, that's gonna get you all the information <laughs> here. Um, and... You're welcome. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Um, so you know that Vesk Two is the second planet from the system Sun. Um, it's a largely oceanic world, it's, as is quite apparent to you right now as you're hovering across the ocean. Um, and that it's the leadership here split the planet into seven administrative zones and you're currently in its capital, Command 2. Uh, mm -hmm. Command 2 is the equatorial island at the intersection of the Exili and Trafodi Oceans in the capital of Vesk II. The seat of the planetary government and its main base for the Vescarian military are located here. 
All requests for touring Vesk 2's ruins must be approved through the city's bureaucratic channels. Again, things that you probably already picked up just from the amount of papers that are still like flying out the back of the hovercraft. Um, the only species more prevalent on Vesk 2 than Vesk are squid like Egyptcrees. I think I'm saying that right, but that's how we're going to go with it. Um, so over time, the Egyptcrees evolved into a harmonious relationship with the Vesk, and many of them form closer bonds to Vesk than even their own parents. Vesk often mentor young Egyptcrees and sometimes helping them learn a trade skill, as is the case for many who become Defrex farmers. The Defrex of Vesk 2 are vicious, but farming them is quite popular due to the lucrative market for their hides. Defrex hides are incredibly tough and are commonly used to make armor. Young Defrex's hides are less thick but possess sharp spines that extend when they're cornered or threatened. So a little bit of a little bit of information about the planet that you're on. Yeah. Um, um, Trill says, yeah, there was a Vesk in my crew. <laughs> Let me tell you, it was a wild ride. And she just sort of recounts um, all of that back to you. It's like the stories that they would tell when they were in their bunk bed uh, back in their oh, mercenary gang. Jella is an, is enamored. She loves the stories, especially hearing about another vest. And she's like, oh, yeah, we can be we can be something. I tell you, uh, you know, but uh, that's a, that's a great story. And she's just like really getting invested in in, in the tale. Again, not paying attention. Um, some of you that might have higher piloting skills or keep probably <laughs> glancing towards the autopilot just to make sure that it's still like on. Like, just near miss yeah. everything. Yeah, there's, like, all these, a... like, little sand dunes that kind of pop up out of the ocean surface that you're just, like, glancing, you know, just right past. Should I, should I take over? <laughs> I mean, it, it depends on how comfortable you feel. So far, the autopilot seems to be doing its its work. Um, Do it. <laughs> Do it. Do it. You won't. Um, I interrupt this programming to let everybody know that we have been, each of us, including Adam, uh, given advantage for the first round of combat, which there won't be. Yeah, because totally no combat. This is a diplomatic mission. Yeah, this is a diplomatic. I'm on a diplomatic mission to Alderaan. Um, <laughs> and uh, then there's also one advantage in our open pool. So thank you, chat, for your generosity. Thank you. Keep thank it coming. You. Uh, I can tell that uh, Adam is a, is a gentleman, um, but that he may not be forever. Right. So please save us. It's all it's all the bait <laughs> and switch, you know. Um, yeah. So as you're Wisp, as you're looking at the console, you know, starting to feel a little nervous. But again, you know, you have enough piloting to know that it is doing its job. It's just a, a strange biome that you're in you know it's just all water and and you can't really see what you like what's just beneath the surface so it just is a little nerve-wracking but as you're looking at that um uh chime signals on the comm unit um and gel stops talking and looks and pulls up pulls up a little display and she frowns um as she reads the message you can see her face kind of go from jovial to a frown and she turns back to you and she says uh I'm sorry. We're we're gonna need to make a little bit of a pit stop. Why? Uh, well, I, I got this uh, I had this local farmer friend, and uh, they just put out a no big deal, really no big deal, just a, a just a advisory about um, some escaped livestock. Yes, sir. It's really, it's really not a not a big deal. We just gotta go by and kind of check in and make sure that, that they're, they're all right. So wait, hold on. We're going to pause our diplomatic mission to go look at like ancient radioactive ruins to go look for what is livestock on this planet? Is it fish? Is it fish Death turkeys? Rex. That one, yes. Uh, Yeah, I mean, it's likely Defrex. Uh, so <laughs> there, there's... I don't do animals really yeah me neither i i prefer Not... like technological creatures yeah well, high five. <laughs> do they taste good uh i mean they can yeah you gotta season them up they're a little tough they, but they, they raise them for their hides if that tells yeah. you how good they taste right are, right are we supposed to help or are we just like watching are we like is it spectator <laughs> thing wait, wait. well here's the thing here's the thing i i don't want to like play this card on you but i'm just gonna say that you know a positive recommendation for me 
to my superiors might help uh, improve this diplomatic negotiations that you have with the vest two leadership. I mean, I, I, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm just saying. Uh, this... Don't they make Defrix hide armor? Yes. Don't they like turn that stuff into armor? Yeah, they do. I mean, well, well could we, if we help you with these uh, aggressive negotiations with these <laughs> creatoids, uh, <laughs> maybe uh, we could have some of the uh, the spoils. Uh, yeah. Oh, God, I, though. I, I mean, like, I could certainly put in a requisition for for some of that armor. I, I'm not going to promise the hide of my friend's Defrex's armor, because I think, I mean, that's not my armor to give. But I, but if they were maybe to not know that it went missing, then, like, I, ah! Well, I mean, it'd be pretty hard to, like, steal a hide from their Defrex without them noticing it, right? Like, they're still still on, on the body. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I get it. I get it. I mean, it's it's good armor. It really is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. as I said, I'll put it, I'll fill out the forms in triplicate and I'll try <laughs> to get, I, I, you know, you should have that requisition no less than seven years. Uh, can, can Let I... me help with the forms, honey. <laughs> like, I, I know how to do these forms. So yeah. I... You just don't worry. You're you're a little hot about it, okay? Oh man, I would I would really appreciate it. Can uh can you can you write in Vesk? I'm sure I could figure it out. I mean, I most can. of it's just filling in little bubbles, you know. I, I speak Vesk. Oh right great. Vesk. Well, oh. I, I I feel like my report's getting more and more glowy by the minute. Um, <laughs> can I can I roll like a sense motive because I this sounds sure. so weird. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> like, Uh, yeah. Uh, 20. 20. Nice. Uh, okay, so you get the sense that, like, Jell is genuinely wanting to help this farmer because clearly it's a friend of, of hers. However, okay. the, the weirdness is coming from being a little nervous about chasing down, oh, you know, a wild Defrex because that could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, and she doesn't really want y'all to kill it. She wants you to like capture it and get it back to the ranch, you know? Um, and that's a difficult task because Defrex will probably try to kill you. I've, um, I've never seen a live Defrex. I really want to see it. I, I want to meet an Idget too. I've never met one of those. Yeah, me neither. Oh, well, sounds great. Couldn't well, you what... like go to a zoo? <laughs> how, how do we um gonna take him without killing him <laughs> well i mean you're the you're the star finders uh, i've got know, a compliance uh, ray we can I have a compliance it. ray as well i don't like killing things so that won't be a problem yeah i, uh, I, I look at my drone and he has like this huge weapon it's like mm. <laughs> yeah well i mean listen i'm, I'm sure that uh old boss has has some things that are specific for this as they do you know that is their livestock. Um, let's just let's just head over there. Take about a half hour, and, and we'll uh, we'll go over there and we'll, we'll just we'll just see what what's what. Does that sound good? You guys you guys on board for that? I mean, good is a relative term, but I'm here, mm -hmm. so. I mean, I you want a selfie? Are. You want to take a selfie with me? While Sounds we... fine. I, mean, I do, I do, but with the deference. Okay. All right. All right. Sounds good. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, you know, there's like a half hour of her just full throttle. Like she opens up the hovercraft um, and all of a sudden her aloofness as a pilot seems to evaporate and she has hyper focus and she is just zipping around um, various things that are outcroppings that are coming out of the ocean. Hmm. Um, and eventually she slows the vehicle and parks at this rickety wooden dock. Uh, on a strip of a sandy beach that gives way to rolling hills. On the crest of the large hill stands a cottage with fenced fields all around it. Um, you see this Ijitkiri. Uh, I wish I had some art for that because they, they look really quite crazy, but it's like a big squid head that has a couple tentacles that are like, one, two of them look like arms, and then the rest are like tentacles that are used for movement. Um, and they just have these big eyes on this big cone-shaped head. And uh, as the Ajitkri catches sight of Jell, he shouts happily, 
Big sis, thank God you came and brought friends. As you can see, my fence is busted. Coral, that's the little one, charged me this morning at feeding time and broke clean through the gate. I couldn't run after her and leave the fence like this. And two of his tentacles gesture to the damage. One of them getting loose is bad, but the entire herd, I'd never risk it. But now I can't figure out which way Coral went. Can you help track her down? Um, point of order, just like a quick question. Is this thing's name Carl or is it Coral, like in the ocean? I really need to know. Coral. 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 <laughs> I do. Does that clear it up? Yeah, it's maybe Carl. maybe say it again. Carl. Okay, I, what I'm hearing is that like it's probably both, and we're fine with that. Okay, great. Yeah. So either or. <laughs> <laughs> the solid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jill like runs up and like immediately puts her arm around. Um, the full name of this creature is Bosman Zorbolo, um, but she says. Uh, Boz, it's gonna be all right. I, we got some help. They 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 said they were gonna help uh, track track this thing down. Um, and she like hugs Boz, um, and and Jill just kind of starts speaking for you. <laughs> it's just like yeah, they're they're all about it. They said they were gonna jump, get right on this, and the, they were gonna uh, bring it back, and we're gonna take selfies and everything. <laughs> Um, do you have um, like Coral's favorite food or like a sock that it l likes or a way to um, attract it by any chance? Mm. Is it tagged? So no, uh, it's not tagged. Um, and, and Coral, <laughs> Coral, Coral <laughs> likes to eat all manner of things, uh, has a very wide and, and special palate. Uh, pretty much anything that is meaty, uh, she will eat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like people meat or like meat meat? Uh, she do doesn't people? normally eat people meat, but she is pretty hungry because she missed breakfast. <laughs> Could we take breakfast with us to mm -hmm. her? Uh, that might be a great idea. Hold on. And uh, she goes and gets some, <laughs> <laughs> some coral snacks. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> just a big bag. Uh, and it, Thanks. Uh, yeah, it's like this huge bag of, of treats, you know. Um, they're like biscuits uh, that are made with, you know, I don't know, some, some sort of other indigenous life form uh, uh -huh. paste mixed into this biscuit. They smell I'm gonna awful. I'm going to pocket one. Okay. Now roll sleight of hand. Sure, sure. That's fifteen. Uh, what are you doing? I don't think that that is meant you could, for Rex. You could re-roll. We have a re-roll. I'm gonna I mean, do. I'm gonna use advantage. You, all right, there yeah. you go. Twenty-four. Do it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, never Thanks, mind. Chef. Never mind. I didn't see anything <laughs> <laughs> over there. <laughs> Does the bag of treats say? Um, like it did say coral, but it's it's scrubbed out you so you can't really see how it's spelled. You just know yeah, like, it's for that. <laughs> like it's like ripped right through, like it was opened yeah. right through the, yeah. the thing. So you can't make we'll out if know. it's an O or an A. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um yeah. So she, um I'm sorry, uh Boz gives you these treats and then also um a specialized Defrex harness and kind of explains to you how to use it. Um, but you would have to sub subdue the defrix first. But once you do that, like the, you get this harness around, uh, it'd be much more uh, easy to kind of guide her back. Um, uh, I'm new to this whole animal husbandry business. Uh, what do you consider subdued? How will we know? <laughs> yeah. Um... Let's say when she's not trying to eat your face. That would be pretty subdued. Is this a rough line of work, man? This seems... <laughs> How many of these things you got on this mark? <laughs> uh, a lot, but this coral was always kind of the spunkier one of the bunch. 
Does he have any like visible scars? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, let's roll a perception check. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Uh, twenty-five. Yeah. So you you see that like the, you know, I say collar, but you know, whatever kind of wraps around the bottom side part of this, yeah. you know, that's kind of pulled up a little higher, you know, and then you can see like a little bit of scarring. In the jugular Yeah, ridges. just kind of Not out. so much here or here. Yeah, it's like, like right here. here, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they um, do explain how to use this properly, right? So it's basically yeah. mechanically going to give you a bonus to like grapple and pin checks, which is what they're asking you to do is bring, you know, you can knock, a, knock the Defrix out, but they want her back alive. Um, and it's a it's a young Defrix, so there's that. You know, it's not a full grown Defrix, so you, you mm -hmm. a little bit of solace there. How big is a baby Defrix? Uh, let's see. Let's consult the tape. <laughs> I'll roll a take life it, science. Take it to the yeah, tape. Yeah, I, well, I, I want to roll a life science too. Yeah, you go. For yeah, you out. can, but um, and I'll give you some more information. But just that question, they can definitely answer uh, that it is a large animal, even a young, even a young hey. one is large. So, I got twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Okay. Um, so as mentioned before that the young ones have these spines that bristle um, when they feel uh, you know threatened and so basically they have this ability called bristle that if you are adjacent to a young defrex you could potentially take a little bit of damage um, from these from these spikes that are on their back so um, you mind your distance like a little bit grappling with me. <laughs> I feel like in the middle of this uh, description of our per perchance imminent demise, I should let you know, uh, Adam, that you have been granted a now a disadvantage <laughs> uh, based purely on the danger uh, oh, okay. that we feel. So yeah, we'll, we'll we'll save that disadvantage for the combat, so it'll be worth worth <laughs> it, right? Yeah. Uh, that's totally not going to happen, by the way. There's no combat coming. No. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Um. And so then Boz also takes you to shows you the fence where it was busted and you can see a line of tracks in the sand that lead north past the gate and then kind of up over the hills into a grassy field so you know whenever you're ready if you have any more questions by all means you can ask but whenever you're ready you you're going to be tracking this trail yeah so that i feel like uh they're just talking about or it, there's there's the discussion of like oh sweet baby carl mm -hmm. uh got and it in perfect the background uh trill uh is just sharpening her dueling sword <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so gel mentions that she's gonna stay behind and help buzz repair the fence because of course mm -hmm. she is uh but you know we don't want any more defrex getting out and so she's gonna to help buzz get the fence repaired um, you know, you guys are sharpening your weapon that it, Boz looks a little kind of gives you a little bit of side eye on that, but tr trust yeah. is trusting the star finder, you know, uh, ideals and, and, and you could tell that there's a little <laughs> bit of nervousness there. The sending, you know, six people that they don't know after their young little baby Defrex. So mm -hmm. And probably we're all like heavily armed, so yeah, I don't <laughs> you're think... like in all your gear, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, I the first thing we're gonna need to do is see if we can't track this trail. Um, so we'll take perceptions or survival checks. You get a pick, pick, yep, okay. 23 perception for me, 23 perception. That's a very good roll. 18 18 17 17 uh all right well i'm gonna take that 23 um that it that is the one that beat the dc so uh burdock you 
can kind of get hone in on the on the trail of this animal um and you you spot some bent blades of grass and some flattened vegetation um you even see a little bit of grass that's been like munched on and then you can see like it was spit out you know a couple like a meter or so away like chewed on it for a while and decided didn't like it uh but you can keep keep moving um that's all eye level to you right burdock (laughs) yeah i'm down i'm down in the weeds (laughs) i am the weeds yeah um and so you, you're able to kind of stay on this trail and it leads into a field that opens up into this marshy clearing. Um, and in the clearing, there's like this two foot deep water as dotted with small clumps of grass and sediment, which is, you know, makes it a little bit more difficult to track. Um, and it's also going to be a little bit difficult to navigate yourselves because of the, the wetlands aspect of it. Um, so you have a couple different approaches here. I'll let you kind of tell me what you want to do and I'll ask for the appropriate roles. But there, as I said, there are small little clumps of what looks like might be firm ground that you could kind of try to navigate across this marsh. Do any of you have any means for crossing wetlands or are we going to just try to the old hop, skip and jump? Yeah. yeah. Um, I have wings, so I'm going to fly and not get dirty. And Perfect. that's what I'm going to do. I cannot lift any wind though. I'm very small. <laughs> uh yeah it, trill just kind of looks at you and she goes oh man like so jelly uh begins trudging through in all of her cyberpunk glory <laughs> through just the gross mess okay um so for that uh, i'll let's take a um acrobatics check just kind of keep your footing like basically anybody that's walking through here is going to have to roll either acrobatics or athletics I'll, I'll walk through. I'll put Burdock on my shoulder if he wants. Hey, thanks. Perfect. I like it. Thoughtful. Uh, 25. 25. All right. You're good. So you, you're able to um, balance on some fallen tree trunks that connect some of these little islands, these little mini islands, and kind of do some nice little jumps and pirouettes as you make your way mm-hmm. across the marsh. Uh, <laughs> Maple's just kind of hovering above you all just like, I'm good up here. You know? <laughs> right? yeah. uh, all right. So let's get that acrobatics or athletics, whichever you prefer. Um, Wisp. Can I aid Wisp two. with acrobatics? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got 22 acrobatics. Okay. That is enough. Um, you can, you can just give them, you know, moral support, you know? Like yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, so yeah, you're <laughs> able to also do the same, make your way across. What about, uh, Triel, how is how uh, is... she got uh, fifteen athletics and uh, Gerti got twenty five athletics. Uh, okay, so unfortunately for Triel, you kind of have some misfooting, yeah. and oh. uh, as you're trying to to hop from one of the islands to another one, you kind of your leg just goes deep into the muck, oh. um, okay. and it like immediately suctions around your leg and it it actually is going to take the assistance of the rest of the party to kind of pull you out. Um, No damage, nothing like that. It just kind of delays your, your March across here by, by an hour, you know, it takes a full hour. um, Oh, wow. To, to kind of (laughs) resolve that. Um, However, your drone does just fine. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm be- I'm very bad with this nature stuff. I oh, right. You were the one worried about the water too, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm a mechanic. I'm not like used to this right. modern Organic. stuff. Oh, come on. So as as we're kind of plowing through, uh, there are a couple of um, kind of glowing. Uh, like runes on the side of uh, Trill's throat and you hear her under her breath speaking in little like weird chirps and, and trills. Uh, but uh, she's basically telling any tadpoles or gross animals in the water to stay away from her using her uh, augment her organic augmentation that allows her to speak with animals. She's like, listen here, I don't want to be touched. I don't want to be sniffed. I don't want to be bit. I don't want to be crawled upon. Uh, I'm wet as it is. 
And that's as far as this goes. Is a no touching trail zone. <laughs> All creatures six feet. Yeah, like as you say that, like none of the creatures like directly respond to you, but you ever hear like a little group of like uh, yeah. like tadpoles or something in the, in the water go. I mean, she's in our house. I'm just saying, like she's <laughs> walking through our house, so whatever. But yeah, I want to talk. I don't want to touch her anyway. Like, yeah, and then they're like scurrying away because you know tadpoles are scared. Uh, <laughs> You can hear that because you can speak done. with animals. Thanks so, you know, that's, yeah. you get that information. Uh, yeah. Eventually, the marsh starts to dry out as you make your way through, and it leads into a, a dune covered beach, uh, I guess, on the other side of this big island that you're on here. And you can see clearly a set of tracks on, on this sand. Um, but the sky starts to darken. Um, as some distant sand clouds obscure the late afternoon sun. So let me get uh, physical science or survival checks. Twenty-three. All right. Doing great over there, Alex. At twenty plus one is twenty-one. Oh, watch out. Uh, thirty-two uh physical science. Woo! Wow, all right. Um yeah, so <laughs> You learned uh, a lot stuck in the mud. Well, yeah. the, I was watching the sky right, while you right, were you helping were like, me. You, <laughs> right. And you were certainly noticing that a sand squall was developing. Um, and so during some of that time that you were watching it and, and being extracted from the muck, um, you're able to kind of guide the rest of the party to um, you find like a little overhang, a rock overhang that's coming out of one of the dunes. And you, you all kind of burrow under there as the weather pass right so you you don't really get buffeted too much by the sand um and it's, it doesn't take long it's just like a little gust of whir it's whirling sand pushes past you um and you guys have successfully tracked the defrex with no adverse conditions at the end of it so congratulations there mm -hmm. um and th because this grassy marshland recedes as low hillocks rise from the sodden ground, leading to a white sand beach. The dunes covering the beach shift as the wind blows sand into gusts and whirlwinds in the air, creating an ever-changing landscape. Um, the trail leads across the width of this island and ends at this beach covered in dunes. And let's go to a map, just, just so you can see. You're right. Like it's just it's just for immersion's sake. There's no right. no no other reason that we would go to a map. Um, okay. Yeah. Why, party order is we... just to be organized. Right. Uh, um, as we transition, I just wanted everyone to know uh, we had a donation for uh, two hundred dollars and or sorry for one hundred dollars. I'm just I'm making things up now. <laughs> I can't be trusted. Uh, that is a reroll for every single player. Uh, and just to add insult to injury, uh, for you, Alex, old Scratch Johnson wants you to know that he's imposing disadvantage upon you. Disadvantage <laughs> be upon you. I've earned it. <laughs> you see, you started rolling too well. They're coming. They're coming for you, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. They want to see you. They want to see you stumble. Um, oh, uh, I don't have my drone um, token. Oh yeah, let me let me drop that on there for you. I mean, you got to have Gertie. We can't do this without yeah. Gertie. <laughs> um, so you guys can arrange yourselves however you want in that lower right corner. Um, and you see at the top of the hill. Let's see. Let me make sure you can see it. Oh, I think the that the drawings are over the map. Yep. Saying. I just saw okay. that. Thank you so much. <laughs> No, appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So you see at the top of one of these dunes, uh, Coral, and she's sprawled atop the dune, just napping, just like belly out, you know, just taking in the sun. Um, and so because you've managed to kind of come up on this, uh, tracked her pretty well, you've caught her right here in a nap. So... What do you guys want to do? Let me let me pop that image up so you guys can see this <laughs> at home and here, because they're, they're like little skunk Aww. beavers, mm. you know. Like Carl. Skunk... <laughs> oh, that wait, that's Carl. Carl. That's Carl. 
Yeah. Oh, wait, that's way cuter than yeah. I thought. I thought was. it was going to be like I, a lizard. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I thought it was going to be like terrible. a lizard. I put my dueling sword away. I told you it was a bait and switch. And, and away. And it's a baby, it's right? It's uh, like, uh, it's cute. I mean, I can't it's... wear you, but I want Carl as a pet. And <laughs> that's what I'm young, right? This... Um, yeah, this is a young one for sure. So it's extra oh. cute. It's extra point, cute. Of, point of order, I want to ask uh, a rules question. Can I? Uh, can I cast uh, Charm Person on an animal, or does it have to be a person because the spell is called Charm Person? Uh, yeah, I think that you have to. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure it has to be uh, a Son of a gun. Humanoid. All right, that's fine. I, th that's I fine. mean, I respect that you that you negotiated. I was yeah. just asking that's, some. Yeah, some that's all we can DMs do. are more benevolent than other ones. So. I don't <laughs> see. It's not, I see. it's not up to us to decide that Carl's not a person. What's that? I don't think that it's up to us to decide that Carl's not a person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, look mm -hmm. at that look at it i mean oh. it's definitely a being of majesty of great majesty <laughs> um so yeah it you do kind of have the advantage in this situation um about you know how you want to approach right huh we have one harness you have one harness and the treats and treats all right, so are we setting a trap? Like, what is... I'm, I'm pretty sneaky. I'm pretty confident I can get close to Carl without disturbing Is, oh, it, is it possible to put the harness on, on her without waking, waking her up? <laughs> is it possible? Anything's possible, I mean. <laughs> Sounds well, like really got to roll 32 yeah. again. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. And, and we have re-rolls. Yeah. So I don't know I don't know what a re-roll is in character, but I, but we have them. Uh, and is on our the side. other thing is, we were told the only requirement was while it's not biting you in the face. <laughs> That's true. And I feel like sleep, if if not sleep, then what what other status could that describe? <laughs> yeah, because is it is it possible like to beat her without killing her? I don't <laughs> I Found, yeah, see, yeah, really you, could, you could do non-lethal damage non -lethal. if it gets into yeah. that situation for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, guys, I, I came prepared for anything, and I do have some superior intoxicant. I don't know <laughs> if that could give us the upper hand, depending on what Carl thinks oh, is a good about? time. It's Carl. I mean, Carl. We, 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 can soak, we, we can soak the treats in intoxicant. Yes, yes, yes. That's a good one. This is exactly a good and idea. Then, and then this we'll save the at least a couple for the animal. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I like you. Um, <laughs> I think it's a really great idea for like whoever's sneaky. Wisp, I think you said you were pretty sneaky. If you just kind of like sneak, sneak over there and like drop the treats and kind of like back off. And then we'll see what happens. Because I don't want it to run. Because I don't want to like fly really fast. <laughs> so, so to be clear, the plan is to uh, dose one of these treats. Sneak up, put it there, and then wake wake Carl up. And, and yeah, I'll I'll like eat. call him from uh, with my with my throat. Mm -hmm. Hey Carl, sounds, like yeah. that. I'll say Carl, <laughs> <"Kakarl." laughs> uh, and hopefully that will get their attention. Okay. Uh, I well, I I think it's an interesting plan, and I'm very curious to see how this shakes out. So you, you know. Um, our, our man Brother is going to supply us with some sedative. Yeah. Uh, a question: oh. This this um is is difficult terrain because of the sand, it is. or is it yeah? Is. Oh, yes, I is. hate <laughs> difficult terrain so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do we want to set ourselves up on this map where we want to be when uh, Judgment Day comes? Yeah. <laughs> I suggest it. Yeah. Uh, she is going to take out her laser pistol, you know, just in case, yeah. uh, and begin making her way. Is there somewhere where I could maybe be behind cover on this map, Adam? Um, Can you advise? You could come over to this ridge that's over on the east side and kind of take some cover and from the edge of the dune there. Great. There's that's nowhere like directly, you know, if you're looking at a straight ahead now, it's, you're pretty wide open there, but you could go over in that little valley of dunes. I'll go over here and just kind of lay down mm -hmm. uh, and take some cover there. All right, so I, I will say before you make that move, and I'll let you oh, okay. make, make a decision if you still want to do it, it would require a stealth roll to to get across there. And it, you I, know what? You know. I have a reroll. Yeah, okay. So 
what could happen? Yeah, I'll do the same, a similar thing. Uh, I well, if go... you're flying, uh -huh. you're, you're going to be able to do it without needing a stealth roll. Oh, dope. Because uh, okay. you're not disturbing <laughs> anything, right? Yes, so. I am. Ooh. Yes, that's yes. Oh, no. Uh, I have some bad news. Uh, <laughs> even with advantage, I rolled a maximum five. Uh, I do get to add uh, nine to it, so that's 14. Uh, technically, if I, I could take one of the rerolls from the pool, but I've already taken one well, uh, of mine. I so. should take it. Here's the thing. I ha I have to roll a perception. That's already going to be at a pretty big negative because yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's and see. I have and disadvantage we'll... imposed on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll Let's see how it goes. See how that goes. All right. All right. Well, that was a nine on the first roll, so it can... <laughs> doesn't look good. Yeah. All right. So with with you are you are right. able to do it. Like you you get over there and you step on the like kind of base of that dune and a couple rocks kind of tumble yeah. down um, and the Defrix just kind of <laughs> and then just kind of rolls over uh, on his belly on her belly and just like slops her yeah. limbs over the top the sides of the dune and now her back and her bristles are like kind of yeah. fluttering across her back like, <sighs> as she's Trill purring, is but kind of like trying to crawl up the dune and anyone who's ever tried to crawl up a dune knows the exact experience that <laughs> she's going through right now where like it's just, it's very difficult terrain, uh, as was described. And she's just like, I hate sand. It's coarse. Um, I would like <laughs> to add that uh, I am flying in the air and I am definitely taking a video of this. Like, oh my God, it's going to be such good content. It's very good. <laughs> oh man, this Amazing. is definitely going on the story right here. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So my question then to, to Wisp is, uh, do you want to go ahead and try to make your stealth roll before everybody else moves, or do we want to let everybody else move before you try to get up there? It's kind of a gamble either way. Um, from what so, from what I know about um, these these animals, um, Defrex, is it a fight or flight type of animal? If it wakes up and and feels threatened, is it going to run away or is it going to charge after? It will fight you. Okay. From, from that rolled over from recall knowledge, yeah, you would you'd know that this this thing will fight you if it feels. Well, that's actually good because that means it won't run away and we'll want to chase it. Right. So, that being the case, we we probably should all move into position. If it wakes up, it'll just come at us, or if, unless other people disagree, I don't mind going up there by myself. Um, I don't think it can kill me before you can come help me. Yeah, the, the reason I asked you first is because you're likely to succeed at your stealth roll. Yeah. You know, and you can at least get the dose Scooby treat in, into, into position in case somebody else fails their stealth rolls trying to get into position, right? Yeah, let's do that. How many treats, how many doses do we have, Burdock? I had like a bottle of, well... I don't know what uh, a dose of superior intoxicant is, but I assume it's like a normal sized drink for a medium creature. Yeah. yeah. Or like soak, soak a few of them and make a little trail. I want to get it down yeah. off the top of the mm -hmm. ledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll say, you know, take, it will take like two treats, right? Yeah. To you think, you know, <laughs> based on your, your, your recall from your textbooks, you know, you're like, oh, I don't I wish I paid more attention, but I think that'll be enough, you know? Um, let's go ahead and get that stealth roll. All right. Go, Chris, go. That's 27. Ooh. 27. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. So you're able to make your way to the Defrex, and you can put your token in any adjacent square next to the Defrex. It takes you a minute to climb, kind of climb up that hill because you're trying to do it slow, trying to do it quiet. But you're, you know, it's one of those things where you know not to put too much weight down as not to cascade the sand down the side. So you're just like gingerly kind of working your way up and you, you see this skunk porcupine hybrid looking creature. Um, it's just sleeping very peacefully. Um, I'd like you to make a sense motive check. I'm terrible what? at that. Fourteen. Fourteen. Hmm. 
you are not sure what's going to happen with this Defrex, but the Defrex definitely looks very, very asleep. Okay. So you're, you're looking at this beast and you're right up on it and it hasn't budged or, or really given any kind of indication that there's a change in, in the airspace around it, right? That has no awareness that, that you're there. Who has the harness? Great Alice? question. <laughs> Alice is the strong one. Yeah. All right. Sure. Hmm. Okay. Well, <laughs> Alice, <laughs> what's your stealth looking like? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, Slow and steady. So, you know, that's the information I give you now. Kind of that little bit of, of idea. Wisp, what, what do you want to do as you're right there? Um, I feel pretty good about it. So I want to put the treats down. Mm -hmm. One and one after the other, kind of in a line down the dune. Mm -hmm. Try to get it kind of down into that uh, depressed area in between all the dunes. Okay. So I'll lay them down, and just kind of move down like this, right? And leave them here. And then head back over here, I guess. And then we'll make a noise. Is that our plan? Um, so where, where are you? Where you ping on the map? Where you're putting the treats? Like down in a mm -hmm. line like this. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, so I will need you to make another stealth roll as you're okay. working your way down the other side of the dune. Uh, that's a natural 20. Oh, beautiful. Um, all right. So you, you, you have it set up a nice little trail that leads to right there. I will ask um, Burdock, Alice, Trail, if you want, want to move into any other position before we make the call. Um, yeah, I see some landscape yeah. features that look kind of like me. Uh, <laughs> I would like to go up to this one that's to the northwest of Carl. Uh, you're talking about these like little cactus looking things? Yeah. All right. So that that is going to definitely require a stealth check. I'll do it. Now, when do I take my disadvantage? Um, let's say now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just let's, do it now. Uh, let's just, let's just do get it, it out of the way. Yeah. I got a 20 and 26. So 20. A 20 and 26. Solid. Well, you had it with the 26, but you don't have it with the 20. All right. Huh. All right. So where so, am I? So you're there. All right. But the Defrix wakes up, you know, as you get there. Oh. Um, it like gets on its feet and kind of stretches and looks around and sees all of you kind of spread out, uh, and the bristles on its back get very stiff. And I guess we're going to need to roll initiative at this point. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, for treats. those <laughs> for those of you that are new to roll twenty, if you would click your token and then click initiative from your roll twenty sheet, it will bump it right up to the turnover very slick like perfect thank you alice uh i rolled a dirty 20 i'm just gonna <laughs> uh, how, how how do you do that sorry i didn't understand uh it. so click your token make sure your token is highlighted mm -hmm. and then on your character sheet in roll 20 click okay. on the init okay. button It'll... Did you did you make these for us? What's that? Our character sheets, or did you? I did. Were you able to? Adam, that's <laughs> so much work. Thank you. Well, my pleasure, Anne. Oh, never mind. Okay, I got it. I figured it out. <laughs> I feel terrible that you had to do well, it. Well, I didn't put spells in, so that's, well, that's perfect, there's that. I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So here's the good news, um, Burdock. You you won the initiative there. Uh, Maple, you said you got a dirty 20. Do you want to take that? Role? That's okay. I'll stay in this. I like going, I like going later. You like, you like where you're at. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So let's see. Let's get, let's change the, the mood up a little bit. Um, so you have the initiative here, Burdock. Uh, so far, the Defrix hasn't really done anything but like 
come awake. So it hasn't necessarily noticed the treats yet. It hasn't really focused on any one of you yet. It's just kind of like, what is going on? What is going on? So you tell me, what is going on? I wonder, uh, I probably can't bluff this, uh, the Defrex, can I? Okay, I'm, explain. Well, I mean, I have reasonable <laughs> excuse as a uh, as a, an envoy ability where I can speak with conviction and avoid conflict by seeming innocent. So that's going to be a language dependent, <laughs> yeah. I believe. So I don't think that's going to okay. work in this case. All right. I rip my throat augmentation off of my out of my throat and I throw it at him. No, <laughs> no. I, I don't. Do it, it, it lands in the sand ten feet from. <laughs> Damn it! Oh gosh. I'm gonna. I mean, I don't want to do anything hostile. I'm still you hoping can, it'll settle you down. You can hold. Yeah, you can hold your turn. You know, that I'm gonna, is always I'm gonna an step. I'm gonna step behind this plant. Okay. All right. And as a tiny creature, I'm probably uh, that looks just like it. Maybe it thinks I'm gone. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you do that. I need you to go ahead and roll me a perception check. Mm-hmm. 20 20 you see uh approaching from the north another squall developing of sand um and then it's heading in this direction alice you're up all righty um so she sees that she doesn't have time to get anywhere right now. Uh, so she's actually going to, she's like, the sand, I don't belong in the sand. Um, and so she's actually going to just wump her way over here, understanding it's uh, difficult terrain. And she has the other bag of treats as well as the harness. So those are the two things she's holding on to right now. Um, <laughs> So she doesn't want to get its attention first because she knows that there are those special treats that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, but she has those treats and she's kind of ready, like, okay, I'm going to get up and I'm, I'm counting with the difficult train. I think I can get right there. I'm going to get here and I will have these. So if it comes towards us, hopefully I can distract it. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Trio, what you got? Oh, so... Uh Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I, I thought you said trill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we have the we have a trill and a trill. This is this is what you guys did, did yeah. first time. I, we decided things. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I coral will. Coral or coral? It's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, I um, my drone only have one action unless I use my move action to give him a second action. Right. So I have to manage my actions. Uh, so I will just use one action for myself and I will move um, difficult terrain like just like here and I will give him two actions so he can move more. Okay. Uh, there. All right. So everybody's kind of getting in a position. The sand is making things very difficult for mm -hmm. everybody. And you have this majest majestic, super cute baby Defrix, that certainly means you no harm standing up with bristled spikes on its back. Um, <laughs> Wisp. All right. So at the start of your turn, I'm going to roll a perception for the Defrix to see if it notices the treats, all right, to get, help you better inform your turn. Great. All right. So that's a three on the die. So um, is... I guess I could use I'll use one of the advantages in the yeah well I'll tell you um I I I please don't call me a traitor but a game has to recognize game and I may have just donated uh to Jasper's game day to give you three advantages whenever you should need them oh wow thank you um now because I'm touched. you made our character sheets and oh. uh <laughs> th there's nothing worse than doing that and I just really appreciate it. <laughs> well, I appreciate uh, you. Thank you, Anne. Yeah. Um, so I'll use one of those then. Now. Who knew that we would want Adam to have advantage? I know. This I is a very wanna, rare I situation. Sure he's having a good time. This is a rare situation. Uh, so that was a 19 <laughs> on the die. So yes. 
Uh, you see the Defrix's nose twitch a little bit and those eyes hone in right on the treat that's right at its feet. All right. So with that information, what would you like to do, Wisp? I I want to delay until after that he goes, I guess. See okay. if he uh, changes his demeanor at all. All um, right. Uh, or so I guess I guess yeah, I want to delay. I I don't want to ready in action because I don't want to really attack him. All right. Well, it is the Defrix's turn then in that case, and um, is going to move to the treat and then use its action to eat the treat. Uh, and so then, uh, what is the save on this? I know it's a fortitude save. Do you have a DC handy there, Alex? Uh, let me see. No, I mean, this is a food type object. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but it would be on the, um, on the, the poison itself. Well, it's not a poison. <laughs> oh, okay. I see. Like, it's I like see. whiskey. All right, I got it. I got it. I'm just going to come up with my own DC. We'll see how we do. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> looks like uh, we've got a stout Defrix on our hands as just gobbles that first treat up. And that's going to be its turn. But it's it's now beelining towards that second treat. Uh, that's what we wanted. Yes. Uh, we'll see how that second treat does. But I'll go ahead mm -hmm. and tell you. If there was a camera inside the Defrix's belly, it just dissolved that whole treat with no problem. <laughs> uh, I like to take you right in there into the nitty gritty, you know? Uh, the camera zooms in yeah. to the intestines. Yeah. We zoom in three king style all the way into it. Yeah. Uh, all right, Maple, you're up. Okay, um, I'm gonna stay where I am. Can one telepathic message a creature that does not speak any languages? Like telepathic I'm, message a feeling or no? Uh, again, I think it's language dependent. Son of a ding ding. Okay, well then, in that case, um, what I'm going to do... My daddy was a ding ding. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> um, well, gosh. I Wait was, a minute. No, no one's attacked it yet, right? We're just waiting for tea treats. Um, right. I'm going to... Uh, 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 I'm gonna go ahead and hold action, I guess, like everyone else is doing. Um, but up, 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 up. yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wait and not do anything. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, Tr cool. Trill, what about you? Uh, cool. Um, I'm gonna just getting impatient as Trill so often is, like looking at everybody, just like God, why isn't everybody? doing something we got to do something but i she's she's just too amped up and so using her uh wild wise augmentation uh she's gonna telepath she's gonna like carefully step up here on the ridge trying not to attract attention to herself uh and she's gonna say in in the creature's uh understanding in its mind man i sure am hungry man I should just find and sniff out as many treats as I possibly can. And she's going <laughs> to hope that it thinks that this is its thought process. Okay. Uh, can I roll a diplomacy check? Yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay. I'm so glad. Uh, this is my first turn in combat, so I will be rolling with advantage and my expertise dice. All right. Uh, awesome. 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 So with a natural 20... Uh, uh, that would be, let's see, uh, 31 plus 4 is 34. 34. Okay, so you, you, you talk to this Defrix, try to connect on a snack level, you know? Yeah, which, I mean, that is probably the only level I'm capable of connecting with these animals on. Right. Well, I love snacks. I mean, the Defrix is about it, you know? Yeah. Uh, and you hear it say, uh, I like snacks. You want to eat snack with me? You, I am you. Ah. <laughs> and now it looks very confused. And I'm going to give you yeah. a minus 15 to that diplomacy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm, uh, I am the, the spirit of the snack sent by Desna to guide you on an exploratory <laughs> journey towards more snacks. Okay, so it, it looks at you kind of quizzically and then nods a little bit. Um, yeah. 
and we'll, we'll see how that that shakes out. It's uh, round two, <laughs> and the sandstorm is getting closer. Oh, Murdoch, no. you're up. All right, I'm going to uh, try to stealth my way up here. I don't know if I have enough movement to do that to the just behind the ridge. Uh, that would take both of your movement actions to do because of the difficult terrain. That's fine. Oops, you got to move it. All right. And stealth. 29. All right. Very good. Uh, so, yeah, you're able to kind of get right up to the lip of that ridge without... Uh, garnering the attention of the Defrex. And so now it's going to be Alice's turn. Sorry, I'm going to move up to the top of this ridge. Um, and I'd like to hold my action. Once it eats the second treat, she's going to dump the bag of treats down the side of this dune. So they're like <laughs> all spread out in front of her. Okay, I, I love it. Oh no, what have I done? Like, <laughs> I accidentally spilled all these wonderful, juicy treats made from Skittermanders. <laughs> that's what we're, that's, I saw that in the chat, and I like it. So, blame uh, Old Scratch Johnson that these are Terrifying. now made from Skittermanders. Uh, the treats. I'm glad side. I saved one. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Trail, you're up. So, well, I'm a little far away, so I'm just going to move towards them mm -hmm. just in case the creature uh, gets hostile so i move here and i'll move my drone also uh, two actions got it and that's it all right slowly but surely getting there trail don't worry about it uh you'll be you'll be right 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 there yeah. in time for the sandstorm be no problem <laughs> yeah uh okay wisp you're up um i guess i use a move action to Draw all my compliance ray mm -hmm. and stealth. Hide behind the ridge of the dune. Okay, uh, go ahead and roll that stealth. 34. 34, yeah, you, you just kind of lay flat against the ridge. You've got the barrel of your compliance ray like right there on the top, but you're you're hidden from the sight of- I have, I have a standard action still? No, because you used a move action to draw, right? And then it's yeah. a standard action to hide. Okay, I can't hide as part of drawing. I don't believe so. I don't That's believe fair. so. All right, we'll see if it's if that uh, if it even matters because this Defrix is going to go after this treat. It's going to go move in, go for the second treat. We go into the we go into the tummy cam. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how. I'm going to use advantage on this too. So that's two. Uh, that's two of those gone now. No, God. Uh, but that's like a fail on both of those, nonetheless. Uh, <laughs> yes. So with the tummy cam, we see that the the acids of the stomach lining don't quite get it all, and something burrows into the side, and you see the the eyelids of the defrex get a little a little droopy again like not like maybe maybe time for another nap time and maybe maybe it's time to just yeah. make make friends with with the new peoples and it, to that as a free action the defrix will like and i guess at this point you've now spilled all right because you're ready to action you like as he's eating it this cascade of of skittermander treats <laughs> comes sliding down the dune um and the death they're like multicolored, like still a little bit of fur yeah. <laughs> here and they're there they're like skittles um, yeah. skittle manders that's what they're skittle called manders. <laughs> oh man thank you and good night oh um, brother um so yeah uh you see the defrix like kind of lethargically pick up some of those and offer them to you uh trill oh that's so cute. <laughs> uh, so Maple, now it's your turn. I imagine you're just videotaping this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting some like very weirdly uh, Discovery Channel vibes from all this, and I, I'm not really sure what to do. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move my lady a little bit, uh, just a little 
closer. I want to be in position in case it tries to run. So we're trying to, I guess we're all trying to get kind of around it. Mm -hmm. Um, Hmm. What I will do, how far is the storm like? Uh, you would think that it might be around in about six seconds. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Around so in about closer. six seconds. Yeah. <laughs> right. where, where is it uh, coming from? Like uh, From the north. From the north, okay. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm going to activate infinite worlds uh environmental so that i can make the but i want to make the area let's see behind it so like kind of back here mm -hmm. difficult terrain because i assume that that for this for nice. this creature that it's not difficult terrain the desert Correct. is not difficult terrain. okay so what's the opposite of sand uh, uh, it like I'll, turns into like like mud maybe like some yeah you know, i do that um i make uh so my eyes turn white you see a split open in the, it looks like it's opening from the ground and you see like another dimension open up and then a bunch of mud fl fills the area, turning all the sand behind it um, into mud. So it doesn't hit, I'm mean, again, not aiming for the creature itself, just behind it in case it tries to run away that way, I'll get trapped. Okay, sounds great. Okay. Uh, I like I like it. Trill, the million dollar uh, question. Will you eat yeah. a Skittle Mander? I'll I'll try anything once. <laughs> um, yeah, Trill, Trill uh, looks at this creature uh, and, and is feeling a new connection with, with the wild places of the earth this day. Um, and she, she's going to think that this is what she needs to do to like make it feel safe. She's watched, she's watched uh, Space Caesar Milan a couple of times. <laughs> and feels that she knows, she might be able to know uh, instinctively, like people who watch YouTube, they're like, I know how to do it, I've seen a video. Right. Um, and so yeah, so she'll, I guess make a, could I make, could I argue that this is a clever feint? Um, sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool, to, to <laughs> I love a good negotiation. Um, great. Okay, so all together, that would be a, uh, 20, 25, mm -hmm. um, bluff check to be like, om nom nom. Uh, but then she gets like, she's mostly using the bluff to like, make it feel like it's not in danger. Like, we're just here to watch you be king of the dunes. We're not here to maybe shoot you until you're unconscious. Uh, and then, uh, she's going to eat the... <laughs> All right, so I will need you to make a fortitude save on the old I'm, Skittlemander I'm snack. I'm happy to make one. Yep. You know what? I only have a plus one, so what could go wrong? Natural 20. There you go. <laughs> All right. 21. Uh, you, you eat it. It's got, um, as you bite down, you know, it, it does have a good flavor, but like there. It bites back a little. Well, yeah. I mean, it's spicy for sure. Um, and because you have a sweet heat. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. you got the sweet heat flavor. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, you get it like, you're like, what? And, kind of picking in your teeth and there's like a little yeah. bit of like skitter hand skitter man fur in your teeth but you, yeah. you're able to suppress like your gag reflex and not throw up as you eat it and swallow it down it's and, like the chili pepper challenge yeah something like that yeah and she's like maple are you getting this <laughs> i'm a badass yep definitely <laughs> yep mm -hmm, that's what's happening for sure <laughs> um and look at this point like it, it you've you've basically convinced this thing that y'all are friends subdued it enough uh as this sandstorm is approach encroaching the defrix just kind of doesn't like pass out but just slumps on its rear just kind of like lazily like i mean it looks stoned really you know and and, it, and it's just like doesn't seem to have any any you know the bristles are flat now back on its back yeah. um and it just doesn't seem to have any f any fear at this point, and um, you know it's it's you think that it's in a position to where you could get the harness as long as you don't freak it out. And, and in mechanical terms, basically you have one round to get this thing in the harness before the sandstorm hits, because the sandstorm will probably agitate it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, with that, Burdock, you're up. All right. Uh, let's see. 
man, I would love to approach this and like pet it and, and help it stay calm, but I don't know if I can get close enough. Here's one thing that I'll do just for fun. Yeah. I'll let you treat the slope, the back, you know, the down slope of that is regular terrain and not difficult terrain. You can just kind of slide down it. I don't know if that's still, you're still going to be a little far, but it gets you closer. See do the old ray on the back of the piece of scrap metal yeah, down the right. dune. So. Yeah, that, that, you'll be able to get there then with two moves, right? Yeah. Not, but then uh, I don't. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do an old free action pet. All right. Uh, just you know, a little, little free action. You know, the Real classic. Cool. It's, for, it's for charity. You're right. It's for charity. Pet, it's pet a pet, pet for pet charity. Creature. I approach with great vibes. Uh, and. <laughs> Well, we'll see. And I can how, just how roll you, charisma or roll diplomacy, no, or whatever. Gonna, like, I'd to like to just. You're going to need to roll diplomacy to determine the vibes. All right. <laughs> Vibe check. Yeah. All right. I'm taking advantage on this. Okay. I hope you do. 35. Beautiful. Um, so, like, when you come up be behind it, it like, <gasps> like a little startled at first, but then you're just like, hey, with guy. A very, yeah, with a very leafy texture, just like kind of. Pet its fur. Let's be Franz. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. That's the God. first plant pun. It took a we'll long be best time. Buds. Honestly, I'm surprised it took him this long. If y'all know Alex, he's the pun king. I cannot believe it That's took him incredible. this long. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you just kind of like slide down the slope with an extended leafy hand and pet pet this thing. And I'll say, really, guys, at this point, you know, we could we could go through all the mechanics of it, but you guys have the means to have – captured this defrex in a very awesome way i must say like in a very like cool and like uh non-harmful way uh you know except to the skittermanders but what, what, what can you do about that it's already been they done were, yeah they were yeah it was already done they've already been done um so you have captured this defrex and in fact you don't even need the harness like it's just gonna follow y'all now uh, oh because like oh. you gave it treats and so it's now just like a like a puppy dog kind of just like you, know, you gotta give him a treat every now and then uh she she nudges up against you but uh you have enough you know um i guess the real prize with the deaf rex we met along the way <laughs> it's, yeah i mean the friends i mean the friends and the, the yeah, deaf rex it, it's it's the skittlemanders we ate along the way really yeah. it's not i don't want to think too too deeply about that um he says questioning everything so you managed to get the uh the deaf rex back to the ranch and boz is like ecstatic oh let's go oh, i'm so happy thank you for bringing in the defrix back uh, i've made a picnic it's uh, it's gall now instead of Carl. i'm so it's carl say, say it with me carl she said <laughs> carl was great um carl's gonna be a little bit tired because it was a very long walk <laughs> uh okay um so what's provided for you is a great photo op i'll say is you got a great selfie Amazing. situation here because made a oh, picnic yeah. uh on the picnic table and, and i think that uh burdock you'll certainly appreciate the spread here um oh, yeah. it's a lunch made of homemade biscuits <gasps> fish sausage and aged defrex cheese <laughs> <laughs> i don't like that <laughs> Did you milk me, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, Coral, Carl, Goral, you know, depends on where you're from, um, kind of slides Coral, right, back nasty. In, right back into the herd and like kind of nuzzles up against what must be uh, her mother. And they recently milked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> looking a little, looking a little dry. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Coral just kind of curls up and and goes to sleep pretty pretty hard. Um, oh my god! Wow. Uh, <laughs> so, with that, you have completed the first part of this mission, and I would like to. Offer you guys a moment to go to the bathroom, get a new drink before we awesome. load into the next one. Great job, guys. Like you managed to, <laughs> I told you there was not going to be any combat. You guys didn't believe we me. We done it. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Well, congratulations.
questions. Uh, and it and it honestly wouldn't have been uh, doable without all of the advantages and disadvantages yeah, from chat. Seriously. So thank you guys. Uh, keep it coming. We, because you guys have been so generous, wanted to toss it back to you with some awesome giveaways, which I will take care of during the break. Don't enter it yet. I will give you the go in chat. But uh, the, what should what should our uh, giveaway thing be? What should the keyword be, guys? What do you think? He's the right spelling of the Defrex's name. No, that's <laughs> possible. No. no. Uh, uh, Skitter, Skittermanders. Skittlemanders. Yeah. Skittle, yeah. Skittlemander. Okay, it's going to be Skittlemander. Don't enter it yet. Hold the line. Uh, but you will have the option to win a uh, an STL from Eldritch Foundry so you can 3D print your own custom miniature. There are Acquisitions Incorporated to company tokens from Penny Arcade. Uh, Paizo has very generously donated a Starfinder beginner box so you can tell your own stories and have your own adventures. And there is also some Pathfinder themed coffee from Geek Grind. So I will get that started during the break and we will be right back with even more uh, what can only be described as shenanigans. Indeed. Or tomfoolery. <laughs> or tomfoolery. Right. Some might say. <laughs> All right. See you soon, guys. Welcome to Jasper's Game Week on Hearthsinger Games. I'm your host, Anne Richmond, AKA Hearthsinger, the head bard in charge round these parts. And my Twitch and YouTube channels provide weekly TTRPG content with advice, news, and actual plays. You might also know me from the Lost Mountain Saga podcast, my work with the Glass Cannon Network, or the Starfound podcast. May 8th through 10th, I'm partnering with Paizo and awesome folks from all around the tabletop RPG community to bring you four incredible Pathfinder and Starfinder stories each day from noon to 1.30 a.m. Eastern, all in support of an amazing cause. Jasper's Game Day is a 501c3 charity that supports suicide prevention and awareness efforts. And their goal is to invest your donations in services that work to prevent suicide before it happens rather than simply responding to the devastating aftermath. In the past, they have mobilized donations to support the American Association of Suicidology. They've rescued a teen suicide hotline that was going to have to shut its doors. They've donated to Lighthouse for Veterans and a crisis center with a focus on assisting minorities and girls at risk in the DC area. And starting now, we'll be raising donations for Jasper's Game Day at the address on the screen right here until May 11th. So please give generously if you're able to and help to spread the word. Here on my channel, I will be hosting some amazing storytellers for three days straight. You'll enjoy killer combos of all of your favorite players and game masters from actual play podcast and Twitch streams joined by our auction seat winners who have already supported Jasper's game day with thousands of dollars in donations just for the opportunity to join the fray. You'll even find me running and playing a few games myself. So make sure to give me a follow on Twitch to support content like this being made in the future. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can explore the VODs for any games you might've missed during the event. You guys didn't think I was gonna send you on a quest without offering you some fat loot in return. Mm -hmm. Why am I becoming a Skeksy? I've been working my little butt off to make sure that there will be plenty of chances for you out there watching to win giveaways during every show. There will be beginner box giveaways for Starfinder and Pathfinder from Paizo to help you tell your own stories at home. There will be STL vouchers from my friends over at Eldritch Foundry to help you bring your own characters to life as stunning customized miniatures and Acquisitions Incorporated currency tokens from the awesome folks over at Penny Arcade. So tune in for your chance to win and spread the word. So thank you for joining us for this important and joyful celebration of the good we can do when we play together. Now get out there and live your quest life. Bye!
are back. That was a super fun little adventure there on Vesk 2. Um, you know, I, when I was prepping this, I didn't really have any idea of how this group was going to do it because I haven't played with any. Well, I played with Ellie before, but I haven't played with anybody else. And so I wasn't sure what, what it was going to be. And I got to just say that I really like how you guys handled that situation. That was really good. Once you showed us that picture, you know, we couldn't get yeah. by it. <laughs> I know, it like, changed everything. I, I'll the be plan honest. definitely changed, yeah. I thought oh, about yeah. showing the picture, like, whenever you were, like, first getting the information. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to let them think that this is some, like, monstrous, horrible beast. And then when you see it, see see what the change is. Um, and did we do we do have any winners over the break? Uh, we do. We do. I'm doing it right now. Uh, Sir Newt. Doing it live. You yeah, we're, I'm, I'm actively doing it. Uh, don't don't look at me. Don't call attention to me. Uh, no, uh, Sir Newt, you've won the Starfinder Beginner Box from Paizo. Nice, congrats. Uh, old Scratch Johnson, you have won some Geek Grind Coffee. Uh, oh, the nice. The Pathfinder Geek Grind Coffee. Um, Doug in TX, you have won some Acquisitions Incorporated Company Tokens. Congrats. And... Oh, was, <clears throat> I'm choking on my own words. I'm just too excited. Uh, oh, snap, Dad. Uh, you have won an Eldritch Foundry STL. Print your own character up. Do it. And that's that's it. I'll be uh, reaching out via Whisper imminently. Awesome. Well, congrats, everybody. Thank you for yeah. being here. Uh, I do want to just echo Anne's. Uh, gratitude for all the donations that have come in. Uh, it really is awesome to to see those come in i mean obviously it's fun for the game but it's it's really great to see everybody contributing and donating their time and their and their hard-earned money to this awesome cause so really appreciate everybody doing that um how close are we to the goal and do you know do you have that handy or i can wow you're just so needy i am i am uh we are but four hundred and five dollars away very close from the five thousand dollar goal all right well we've we've got this game and another one to hit it right yeah it's in your hands but what if we hit it this game i mean mean, what if we hit it this game what if what you should be so lucky for puppy (laughs) Uh, awesome well congrats to the winners congrats to you players for a successful first mission and let's let's jump into our our second uh part of this adventure and you're back on the ship so i wanted to give you as we start some time to talk as characters a little bit let's get a little bit of rp session here because i mean we're starting a whole new blog with uh trill and i I think we can't let that go unresolved you know trill can we collab yeah Uh, I've made the banner image on Trill's new like blog website and all of her socials. Just like it's a picture of like all of us like smiling with the um, with Carl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Trill's just like, wow, you really made it look like I have. And she looks kind of embarrassed. Friends. Oh, hey, you do, <laughs> pal. Oh, that's really nice. That's nice. I find that in my line of work, like friends are just enemies waiting to happen a lot so it's just nice to know that i can trust all of you i can trust you right roll a bluff for the most part (laughs) i think Uh, let's roll sense motives across the board there you you know uh these days that's about as good of a response as i can hope to get so (laughs) i'll take it um maple do you do you charge for these surfaces these are immaculate um, usually I would, but I'm just like really bored right now because we've done nothing but like look for an animal and sit on a ship for a long time. So I know that's like most what? of what being part of the Starfinder Society is, but I'm trying to like, you know, flip things around and do like some side gigs. You're that's very great. iconic. Um, and I just wanted to ask you, uh, what do you consider to be a good time? I'm just curious. Oh my gosh. Um, so like I have this whole thing that, um, the Desmar people really need to go, on like a lot of dates like constantly so we kind of like we don't really have like one true mate but we do need to like reproduce like like you know clock sticking um also like since i did leave uh Kishoria, which is my home planet um i sort of had like a lot of obligations back there that i will never really talk about um so i'm sort of running away from that and then um yeah shopping the normal stuff <laughs> 
So running away, so the things you find fun are running away from your obligations and shopping. Well, and you probably like that, it sounds really boring. Oh, oh well, I, I mean, I thought that just, it, it was just a nice, uh, you know, it, it would look good on a dating profile. People would be like, oh, she's witty, she's sarcastic. I'm like a cosmopolitan kind of, um, you know, Decimar, not a person, I guess. So, you know, that's fine. Sure. Not everyone gets it. <laughs> I'm so sorry that I have uh, mis mis uh, mis per misplaced your uh, I identity. Well, I'm like so not sorry. a lot of people have, have been to Kashoria because it's like way the hell out. Like it's really far. Mm -hmm. um, so most people like have not gone. So like I totally get it. Hmm. Stranger in a strange land. Still totally fine. I'll have to do some research. That's on me. <laughs> What about, uh, you know, you had a meal there, Burdock. You mentioned you wanted to be, you have aspirations of being a celebrity chef. What was, yeah. uh, what was your, your response to the picnic that was given to you? Let's see. So we had, I, all I remember is the cheese. Oh, there was fish sausage, mm -hmm. just the cheese. And homemade I mean, biscuits. all that was great. Oh yeah. The biscuits were great. Um, you know, that was great. Like, it, and it's a lot better than the Eoxian barbecue that I had on my last trip. It that was, rough. yeah, that was rough. Um, you know, it was it's real stringy, very tender, but I don't know. I just can't eat something that's been on a life. Uh, what about, what about the, the other three there? Um, drill. I, I know I, how was your trip to an oceanic planet as a mechanic with <laughs> with a with a drone? Oh well, she's like um, uh, she's like a little disappointed. She couldn't like shoot something, or <laughs> because she's like, oh guys, I wanted to show you how cool my drone is. I worked so much on it, like I couldn't show how awesome he is. I hope we can. We can kill something this time. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a a, a meaningful aspiration, and I yeah. and, and I appreciate <laughs> it. You know, uh, Alice, what what's what's going on in in Alice's world? <laughs> Honestly, right now I'm writing down all of the things that I'm seeing. Okay, so we've got hide. What are the kind of commodities on this planet? What can we do with them? Um, Alice is kind of a corporate agent, so she is using this to get ahead in multiple ways right now. Oh, so like, like, <laughs> kind of filing some things back. Uh, there's some resources there's definitely here. Some here. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna see what if there's anything we can get out of these rooms too. Let's get some trade deals going. Uh, yeah, Wisp, um, how are you feeling with 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 kind of successfully, you know, drugging the the Defrex and and nobody got hurt and all that. How, how is Wisp feeling? It's, it's it's great. I got to see the effects of an intoxicant on an immature Defrex. That was really exciting. <laughs> and well, uh, put it I, like that. I mean, I got to I got to meet an idiot as well. So I'm I'm just having a grand old time. I'm learning all sorts of stuff, and I got to I got to uh, observe Maple and Trill and their cultural exchange. So I feel <laughs> nice too. <laughs> Everybody's uh, just, just learning. I'm just taking things. it all in. I'm just taking yeah. it all in. It's, it's I, and all that great. you know, and that's really that's really the purpose behind this this excursion to the Vescarium is is to learn about the Vesk, their various planets, about each other, and about yourselves. And I think you guys are doing a great job. Uh, <laughs> as you are just reflecting on this, your comms station lights up again, and your uh, the venture captain has another message for you. And who would like to be the one to read this one? Everybody, I'll do it again. not at once. I can read it. Okay, beautiful. Let's get it. Um, am I reading this in that person's voice or in my voice? In, in your in your own voice, it's fine. <laughs> you mean Maple's voice, or do you mean Michelle? <laughs> uh, There's so many identities. I yeah, know. Let's, 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 I'm in crisis. I I, I want to go with Maple's voice. All right. 
The Voyager's Cultural Alliance on Vesk 6 has requested a crew to retrieve artifacts from a vault. Oh my god, it's so boring. <laughs> Normally, Vescarian contractors handle these tasks, but I'm told our last patrol went missing somewhere south of the valley. As you are surely aware, Vesk 6 is incredibly dangerous. Oh my god, it's so boring. Um, giant plants and animals are common, um, and an electromagnetic storm aptly called the Shriek rains down hell over parts of the planet. Oh my god, we totally almost got caught in that. Um, there's no telling what you might encounter out there, so prepare for the worst. Our contact, Reha Nakar, can hopefully explain everything once you arrive now get out there and make the society proud signed like basically space dead yeah huh. <laughs> all right Triel, yeah, this may I'll... be your chance to kill something yeah, yeah i hope so yeah <laughs> this might be the opportunity uh so let's see here. i'm really envisioning for this for you <laughs> thank you yeah i think we need to like really imagine a future that we want to see for ourselves mm -hmm. Uh, the future with lots of rerolls you know, and advantages and no additional creatures added to any combat. I need you guys to make some vision boards and and really <laughs> set set your own destinies ahead of you. Um, cause I we've did got, bring some hyperleaf if that would help. Yeah, because we've we've got to get Trio a kill. She's so desperate to yeah. show off what what she can do, and and you you have to envision it, and we'll we'll make it happen. Um, <laughs> so. When you arrive, um, you can meet Riha Nakar at the Cultural Alliance's archaeology storage warehouse. Um, so when you get there, um, let's go with, oh, this one's a little different. Yeah. Uh, so you get in this room and it's crammed with towering shelves full of artifacts. Apatra hunches over a workbench, dusting fragments of pottery. She straightens and brushes away the fine layer of dust that accumulated on her black hair. Welcome to Voidress, she says. Frankly, I wasn't expecting such a promising looking bunch of starfinders. I am Riha Nakar, an advisor with the Voidress Cultural Alliance. Looking at you now, I predict that you might just get out of this valley alive. Her tone is reserved and she chooses her words carefully. My job here is simple. I repair, catalog, and store cultural artifacts. It is the retrieving part I don't handle. Usually the military assists with patrols to aid in retrieval and keeping off world looters at bay. But a patrol sent to recover the latest batch of artifacts went missing recently. And a replacement won't arrive anytime soon. So that is where you come in. I need you to retrieve two artifacts from a ruin once called the Azura Sanctuary. One is a blue gemstone beetle that rests above the entranceway to the ruins. The other is a polished stone pipe that rests atop an altar honoring a lizard spirit that once protected the sanctuary. Please keep your eyes open for our patrol while searching. You should have already received coordinates to their last known location from Nayaj. Feel free to ask your questions now. Communications aren't very reliable in the valley. Riha crosses her arms and stands waiting. I mean, what could go wrong, right? <laughs> Did you just say like a whole group of people went missing trying to do the same thing? I did. <laughs> How long ago was that? Like last week, a couple years ago? Uh, no, it was quite recently. Um, okay, that's bad. All right. Is there any kind of creature that you know lives there? Or? Uh, as far as creatures, I don't know. I mean, this is a big planet. I'm sure you'll find some sort of dangers, but particularly in the Azure Sanctuary, our ancestors who created it deeply respected individuality just as much as the modern Patra do. As such, the ruin features a puzzle, which you can solve in different ways. Trust your own instincts, but think before you act. As far as the military patrol, many terrors could kill you on Polonus, but this particular ruin is just north of one of the most dangerous. We call it the Shriek, and mm. you must avoid it at all costs. My worry is that the soldiers may have walked straight into it. Uh, 
could I maybe roll a culture check to know more about the shriek and any uh, maybe maybe my 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 roommate <laughs> could have told me any stories about uh, people who got lost in that area and what kind of things might have caused that. Uh, yeah, sure. You can roll either physical science or culture, whichever you're best at. I'll do culture. You're right. I'm an envoy. Envoy. I know who I am. I know what I'm good for. Uh, 26. So the Shriek is a magnetic storm that rages on this planet, Polonis. I mean, the Vest call it Vest 6, but it's Polonis. And uh, it flings these storms that generate fling razor sharp metal, glass, bone, and unexploded munitions from like lost Vest destroyers and other ships that are on the planet's surface. And it's happening like quite regularly around the coordinates that you're going uh, mm -hmm. like two to three times a day, even um, the shriek is known to rain death over the valley. Is there a pattern to that behavior that's been recorded or no, but of course not. Maybe like a loud <laughs> popping sound three times before it appears. <laughs> <like that. laughs> you chose poorly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's pretty much all you can really know about the shriek. It's uh, this is random kind of storms that are that are you know just made I up love of shrapnel death that comes without warning yeah. i mean who doesn't i'm a risk taker i'm a chance maker uh i this is about to be a song that i'm not going to fit <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i don't think it's a hit uh yeah well i guess we go down there we see what we can see um sure yeah it's like a three hours ride uh, they provide you with some overland vehicles that you can use um and it's as you get to the sanctuary you find that it's located in, within a valley of ruined stone structures uh, these decrepit buildings are now all that remains of a once bustling potra city that stood for centuries until the brutal war of vest conquest um these must be the ruins <laughs> indeed uh i think so the coordinates themselves point directly to a vault flanked by broken pillars. Though the area conceals a trove of uh, potential treasures, the actual historical significance of this has been lost in time, unfortunately. Uh, only part of the structure still stands, and it's this entryway that has a 15-foot high ceiling and is dimly lit. On the outskirts of the jungle stands a stone entranceway overgrown with moss, stone-carved stone lizards encircle an empty socket in the gray stone a constant low rumble emits from within as slowly swinging pillars move over a floor inlaid with sapphire beetles a pair of muddy boot prints leads into the ruins entrance and down the corridor swinging pillars swinging pillars indiana jones stuff right right so is the empty socket where we would have expected to find the the blue stone? Yes. So the previous party took it and went inside. That's what you you could probably infer for sure. Well, we, I mean, we could just, we try to track down where they are. If they're dead, we take the stone, we put it in the hole. Stone plus hole, we win, right? Mm -hmm. If they're alive, then Trail can kill them. Oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, it's perfect. It's a perfect plan. I don't think we need to think about it any more deeply than that. Well, there's one one thing, at least currently, in your way, um, and it is indeed the large stone pillars that are swinging, blocking the path oh. into this. You know, Maple, you you look like you were going to say something. Right? Oh, I was just going to say, like, maybe the group before us that went missing, they, like, got to halfway, you know, halfway through the mission and just got stuck inside so maybe they're like still alive yeah. they said it was only a couple or of days ago maybe they took this gem because it's a 10 out of 10 gem big gem mm -hmm. good gem gem equals money money equals profit money is profit um but they went inside and yeah. they didn't come back oh, yeah you're right, it didn't, you're right. The, boots didn't come back. the boots went inside the boots went inside that's true maybe they didn't there's like a whole <laughs> ghost situation that ghosts yeah. are real by the way i'm not gonna have this conversation they took again off their yeah. Go. yeah. <laughs> they took off their boots. <laughs> a ghost got in the boots, wore the boots inside. Okay, so this is you're so smart, yeah, Maple. It's very complicated, but um. Okay, <laughs> how are we getting past these swingy things? 
So um, I want to make an engineering check, maybe to see how this trap or thing works. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, can, I, can uh, I help her? Uh, yeah, uh, up to two people can aid on this check, sure. I believe it's called a trapper keeper. <laughs> okay. I got 27. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Sorry, I, what I you got? got you? 23. I, I succeeded in helping her. Oh, beautiful. All right. So 25. I also aided. Okay. Okay. So that so takes it to a 25 total, 20, right? 27? Nice. Because I had to... Oh. You roll a 23, then two aids takes it Uh to a 27. 27, yeah. Uh, So you are able to kind of take a minute to watch the pattern as it's swinging there. And and after a moment, you, you see that if you can wait for the pillar to reach its highest point and somebody with some strength, like hold it against the wall when it's at the very like apex of its arc that that would give you time to disable the anchoring mechanism and you could actually detach Mm. one of the pillars so triel is like i have to do this i'm ready for it i can do it so So you will try to uh, it will take two people to do right you one two to hold it in place so you can then do another engineering mm-hmm. check. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So to to um, hold it, what do, what do you need to do? Like You need somebody strong to roll an athletics check. Okay. So I feel knowing... like I can hold this up pretty well. Okay. So I just like back up against it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> well then, Alice, let's get that athletics check as uh, you you kind of just put your whole walrus body up against the pillar, try to hold uh, it in place. Does, does my drone can uh, help her, like aid her? Because he has a- athletics too, or um, only one person can. Yeah, in this particular, so the drone will be able to help you with your engineering, but not with the athletics. Okay. Mm-hmm. I got a 25 on athletics. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, so you try to pin this up, but it just not, you just don't put enough oomph, uh, enough tusk grease in it. And um, it <laughs> swings back and it's going to hit you for some significant amount of damage. Uh, you don't want to re roll that? Yeah. Yeah, we have five. Re roll a 25? Um, I don't know what your 25? bonus is. 25 is pretty good. If we can't really hold it with 25, good. I'm not sure we can. Yeah, I don't it. know how much better I can get than 25 with a reroll. <laughs> I mean, that's true. But it's going to get worse. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, here's the damage. Here comes the damage. First damage of the night. Hope you guys are ready. <laughs> All right. So that's going to be 40, 12 plus 4 damage. I didn't roll super hot. That's going to be 19 points of bludgeoning damage as one of these wow. pillars just kind of scrapes across the back. Of, That's plenty uh, of Alice's hide. So that didn't work, but you can try again. <laughs> I mean, what, do we get do we get a sense of how what the target is based off of the? She was there, very very close. Like she almost had it into place, to, just straining and is like uh, like just just barely missed it. I mean, I'm not a healer, but I have this serum of healing, and if you wanted to have it uh, and try again, I mean, it'll it'll knock you on your ass, but it'll get you going. I'll keep backing up against this pillar. I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. You gonna try again? Is, no, is no one else has athletics that can they? Are there any big objects we could move in the path of the pillar to try and brace it or anything? Um, no, unfortunately not. I mean. All right, all right. Aid is, you just have to get over a 10, right? Correct. To aid. I mean, I could try to help you. I have a plus two to athletics. It's not a lot. Oh, uh, but with the athletics, it's it's an unaidable check, unfortunately. Oh, well, then I'll stand over here where I cannot take damage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm very strong, sorry. Yeah. Real Adam, is there some way I, being tiny, could just sort of like go under this thing? Um, let's roll a perception check. Love that. I love that for you, Alex. 20. 20. Uh, you think that it, it may be, but like it's just moving at such a rant. It's, it's, you, 
it would be difficult to time it correctly. I just didn't know if, uh, like, if it had enough clearance that I could just <laughs> walk under right. it. Just right. over his head. It's difficult to see. But you're saying the... no. Yeah. Can it's we to see. just shoot it and break them? No. Huh. <laughs> I mean, huh. you could certainly try. <laughs> no. I I love that idea. I mean, unless, I mean, unless Alice, did you want to do another, uh, did you want to try again with like the- I tried the one more time, like backing up. Okay, to all right. Myself, <laughs> yeah. all right. But I just got barely one more that was a 26. I oh, well, that's the good thing is that the DC was 26. Okay, yes. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it, Alice. So Alice just gives it like one extra Leave. breath, just one extra grunt <clears throat> and like holds it in place. All right, very important engineering check here. Yeah. Uh, that I, can be aided by your and, drone. Yeah, I can use a, an advantage if you guys want to be sure. Use, <laughs> I would love for okay. you to. My, trap, my okay. trap smith tools to disable the physical trap. Yeah. Um, you will, uh, let me let me say this. You will be able to uh, aid, um, and I'll give you a plus two to your aid roll just to kind of ensure the aid. Nice. Okay. What, what's the aid target? Ten. I rolled a natural one, but that's huh. still 14. <laughs> All so right, it's good enough. Two, it's good enough. <laughs> good thing natural ones don't matter on skill checks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fine because I got a 17 and a, and a 16 on the on both. So plus 16. So Whoa. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, really good engineer. So. <laughs> so Alice just like has it pinned in place. It gives you just enough time to reach up there mm -hmm. and like, like un hook the carabiner basically that's holding it into place and it comes down and you can then use this pillar now to kind of like block the remaining pillars. Um, so, so yeah, you've made your way through the entrance. Uh, good job, um, Alice, way to, way to really put yourself on the line there. <laughs> Some great engineering roles yeah. from uh, Triel and let's take you to a new map. I always like great going work to team. Map. What the? <laughs> All right, so we're in this kind of interesting new space here is like the ruins kind of go down and, and then they become part of the inside of a large tree trunk, almost like a petrified tree trunk. And, it, uh, and as you continue down through there, it opens up into this like little valley that you find yourself in. Um, and this once pristine valley bears dreadful scars of its turbulent past. Trenches in the soil expose layers of bedrock, revealing preserved bones of giant fauna. Radioactive fluids collect in the pools and emit toxic gas that clings to structures like mist. Only the rubble littering the ground hints at the ruins that once stood here. Parked between the massive rib bones of an ancient megalith is an abandoned military vehicle. Uh, I feel like until the is it abandoned military f vehicle, we're like reading from the guidebook. Right. Data pad is right. kind of how that sounds. Mm -hmm. It's like when my parents and I were on a road trip yeah. when we were kids, just reading. Yeah, Traveler's Guide to Vessix. Yeah. Does that pool huh. of acid have teeth? Uh, yeah, it's a it's a <laughs> right. it's a toothed <laughs> acid pool. Nothing to worry about, really, though. Right. It's fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, this that that we should check in the in the vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe they left their journal protections to hold up against this uh, caustic mist or whatever it is. Uh, say that again. Do we expect the environmental protections of our suits to hold yes. up against yes. this environment? Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay. Phew. Uh, um, let's let's get a couple general perception checks as you guys kind of take a look at this valley it kind of comes into view natural one. one oh natural one <laughs> uh, I got a three i rolled a 20. <laughs> no, I, did, I did i did too well, some of us could roll if if three of us if the three of us who rolled like ones and twos and whatnot we could take the remainder of the re-rolls Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to to not die to some unforeseen <laughs> bullshittery. Yeah. <laughs> that, okay. That's not going to happen. Is it? Is this just get a lay of the land perception? Right. Yes, basically okay. just a general general flavor perception. Twenty. This time. Uh, there you go. Uh, 
Well, so you see, you guys see this uh, <laughs> tree that's sure, crossed Bill over. Bill opens this, her eyes. Yeah, like, oh, here I am. Um, <laughs> and so you see this tree that's kind of across the that little ravine that has acid pool right here. Uh, you see what looks to be a military issue boot kind of sticking out of each of this, these branches and these branches, like up under the branches. <laughs> the ghosts, they did come this way. The ghosts lost their boot. <laughs> uh, I think there's probably like a body under there. Ooh. Can we see if there's a body underneath the tree? Yeah, I, I just Connected need you guys to, to get a little closer. It's no, no I will reason. fly because I'm not touching any of this. Right, right, right. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, I look Can at I roll me? knowledge plants? See if you this is like a carnivorous Acknowledge tree. me. Uh, yeah. My my drone is not there. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, sorry. The drone was like the last thing that I did. I forgot to put it on the map. So you Excuse go. me, you. the most important player in the party is not on the map. I know. Like, let's get it. Let's <laughs> get get it. the drone on the map. All right. Uh, so yeah, as you get closer, you can certainly see that there are two vest soldiers pinned beneath the fallen tree. Uh, they mm -hmm. are very clearly dead. Um, but if you want to like get onto their person, search them or whatever, uh, it will take some some effort to get the tree off the body. Good, unless they had the jewel. Yeah, we need to check to see if they have the jewel. Yeah, so no, we gotta, I don't wanna touch. Looks like a job for a robot <laughs> in a giant wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Love that. Good athletics, yeah. I suppose. Yes, uh, uh, there's, you have two, two options here. You can try to just deadlift it with an athletics check or you can try to use some of these other branches to kind of use leverage with an engineering. Oh, I'm deadlifting. Let's get it. Let's get it, Alice. <laughs> that is a 27. 27, yeah. Alice just lifts it up and uh, you guys are able to drag the body out from beneath the branches. You can uh, put it down now, Alice. <laughs> Yeah, like it just like crashes to the ground. Um, I'm not sure how I pick it up, but with your tusk. But you know, don't worry about that. You just pick it up. Um, and you see that one of them has like a hard case strapped to their back. So I will check it. Like uh, it, it's like a box, or it's like um. It looks like could be could have a trap or something, or is just a normal. Well, why don't you roll a perception to see if it looks yeah. like it has a trap? Okay. Natural twenty. Ah, no, it's oh. definitely not trapped. Um, okay. Basically, <laughs> it, it's it. What it looks like is just like a hard case that you would use to transport that can mm. be like carried on a person, you know. So, okay. um, like a titanium shell. It is it is locked? It is locked, yes. Okay, I'll try to open it with my engineer. Yep. Engineering. So, 18, yes. real low. No, that is enough. Uh, the DC was 15, so oh, okay. it's not a great lock. <laughs> okay. um, and so, yeah, you're able to pop it open, and inside you see both the blue beetle and the stone pipe artifacts. Um, however, you begin to he hear this awful sound this um and fresh debris covers the area uh, the shrek oh, it's happening yes let's get a perception check or a survival check oh, no. close shrek it comes oh, all right natural 20 Get out of my swamp <laughs> oh, to what all right. dirty 20. all right dirty 24 and for trill uh, that's a fail. Alex, Great. what? Uh, <laughs> uh, I rolled a 12 on perception, but I'm going to reroll that. Okay, we're going to take a reroll on the perception. <laughs> 17. Okay, also a fail. Yeah. Uh, let's... <laughs> yeah. What about you? Unless anybody has personal rerolls, I believe we are out of our group. Oh, uh, we're out. All right. Uh, right is right so... in time for combat. Perfect. Uh, Michelle. So if, uh, anyone wants to um, help? I rolled an eleven, but I do have one reroll left for my for myself. So I'll because I never used it at the beginning. So I'll just do that. Okay. Uh, the seventeen. <laughs> seventeen. Uh, you fail. Cool. Um, <laughs> goodness gracious. Uh, all right. Uh, 
trio? Did you argue? Yeah, that? no, I got a twenty total too. So <laughs> I failed. That is also a fail. <laughs> what about Alice? I got a twenty-three. Twenty-three. Which did you roll? Perception or survival? Perception. That is a fail. And what about you, Wisp? Thirty-one. Thirty-one. The only survivor, oh. Wisp. You're able to jump down into that trench just as the shriek hits. All right, so I'm gonna move you right down here. You don't take any damage. Basically, you you see it, hear it coming before the rest of your party and are able to like take cover. Um, I need everybody to roll a reflex save except for Wisp. Ooh. 19. 19, okay, you're good. 18. Good. Nine. Not good. Uh, you, you, you are going to go ahead and be off target, which is going to be a minus two to your tax, and you're going to take five points of bludgeoning damage as shrapnel just whips across this valley right into you. Um, who, who else? Oh, my God. Twenty. Twenty. Oh, you're sorry. Fine. What were we rolling? Reflex. Reflex. Ooh, no. That, that was not good. Uh, ten, uh, 14? 14 is not good. You are also off target, and you're going to take three points of damage. And then I need everybody to roll initiative. Um, as you see that after this storm comes through, fresh debris covers the area, and new tears in the ground reveal a deeper layer of subsoil. Preserved bones and ancient weaponry jut from the ground, excavated by the powerful storm. A bony hand twitches and grasps the exposed root of an upturned tree. The skeleton of a long dead vesk heaves itself upright and takes a shuddering step. More skeletons rise and shuffle forward in a twisted approximation of marching. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was <Well>. ghost. <laughs> the ghost. The ghost. Oh, the ghost. Yeah. <laughs> She's being battered by shrapnel. She's like, you were right. And uh, team, I must apologize, but as we get initiative, I'm going to take a very, very quick bio before we get no, into combat. No, you're totally fine. Yes. Um, I'll take that opportunity to just kind of say, guys, uh, after we, well, yeah, you go yep. do your, your bio. Um, guys, thank you so much for being here. This is our second to last game of Jasper's game week we are 300 and some odd dollars away from our final goal of five thousand dollars raised we've already raised over ninety thousand dollars uh as jasper's game week in in the last week uh and we are just so grateful that everybody is here if you are uh willing to to uh open your hearts and minds and your wallets and help us out with this combat uh just type exclamation point donate in chat and we will use any boons uh or our uh, illustrious gm can use banes uh, to make our life harder we'll figure it out either way um but uh stick around after this game because at uh 10 30 eastern we have our final game of of the event and hopefully they can take us on home to five thousand dollars if we don't make it during this very game that's that was my whole spiel oh oh my god that was so perfect adam <laughs> <laughs> okay uh you know i have yeah. my i have my timings i guess uh yeah that was incredible well done okay let me roll some initiatives for these baddies real quick so you have some skeletal vesk and you have some skeletal patras on the field they have the same artwork so the uh the, the patras pink and the vesk are green that's how i did this gotcha um all right, let's roll initiative. How are we looking on that goal, Ann? Uh, we are $355 away, Beautiful. guys. Beautiful. Incredible. This is the time to get those uh, advantages in, folks. All right. Or if you want to see us die, give them to, to Adam. It's really up to you. We're not going to take it too personally. Right. Uh, so where where am I actually standing on that? I think I have one advantage left, and then do I have any disadvantages floating out there? Like six or seven. <laughs> Pretty much all your rolls from here on out, right? That's 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 my my situation. 
Um, all right. All right. So we're going to start this up. Maple. You've got uh, Okay. Yes. So I was just looking at the range of some of my stuff because spells are very complicated. All right. Um, I'm going to start with telepathic scream. Um, so I need some help with the range here. Can I get... Uh, I'm right here. So can I get... How many can I get in this in my... I guess. Uh, well, tell me about the range of that. It says it's telepathy. Is the same. Mm -hmm. And telepathy, I believe the range is beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, um, 100 feet. So okay. could I t technically get everybody? Yeah, I believe you could. Um... OK. So uh, what this does is, um, as a standard action, I broadcast a drawing telepathic screech into the minds of nearby enemies. Uh, I can use this ability on. Actually, on one target creature per character level, I'm level five, so I can hit one, two, three, four, five. I'll just not get the purple one, I guess. Well, there's four. There's four of them. These guys right here are the are are not. The, these are the dead military. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So there's understood. only four combatants. Yeah. Oh, understood. Great. Okay, so I do that. So um, I have to succeed at an intimidate check, and the DC is 15. What is the CR of these so targets? So here's the problem, Michelle. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Mind affecting. This yeah, is a mind dip. affecting spell oh, against no, undead, and so as you scream, they are unfazed. Okay, uh, that's fine. <laughs> uh, would you like to move? Um, yeah, I will. I will do that thing at least. Okay. <laughs> Why am I so bad at this game? All of a sudden. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll go over. Oops. I'll go over here. Uh, for now. Yeah, and so let me just explain that trench. It looks a lot more difficult than it is. It's basically like a little two foot ridge, you know? Mm -hmm. So oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's not it's not a huge thing. It's just was enough to give him, ba like basically Wisp jumped down and used that tree that's crossing over it mm -hmm. and the walls to protect himself from the shrapnel that was coming. But it is not going to cause you any problems traversing. However, I'm you fine. don't want to be in a square that has the um, green fluid in it. I'll tell you okay. that. I'm also flying still. So oh, that's great. So yes. you're, you're super, super good in that case. All right. looks like, um, the skeletal Patra is next here and we are going to do a full attack on maple, trying to shoot her out of the sky oh, no. with a like classic bow and arrow. Like this is, so these, these, the bodies here suggest, suggested that they're quite old. Uh, these skeletons, you know, because they're using uh, archaic weaponry here. So we're going to go, I'm just going to do this on roll 20 just to save some time here. So full attack on you. You ready? Here it comes. Yep. I'll be fine. All right. So we got a 23 on the first attack and that's going to be against your KAC. Yeah, that hits. That's going to hit. That's going to hit you <laughs> for eight piercing damage. Fine. Good news. Is it actually archaic or is it? It is actually archaic. Is this? Is it? Isn't it five less damage if she's got armor? It's archaic. Oh, it's uh, it's not less damage. I think her. Is it less damage as her AC gets a, a boost? Let's see. Um. I mean, I said I wasn't going to look up rules, but that's important. That's important. <laughs> um. So with archaic. Yeah, you're correct. It deals five fewer damage um, if they're wearing no armor or archaic armor. Oh, unless, okay. So unless. you are not wearing uh, archaic armor, right? So correct. you're good. So you're going to take five less damage there. So that means you're only going to take three points of damage three, okay. instead of eight. Uh, good catch there, Chris. Nicely oh, done. Uh, and the second attack is going to blow by you with a 13, I, I believe, with the KAC. Yeah, just... Yep. <laughs> shoots into the shriek now i want to make sure that you guys understand that the shriek is still happening um so uh -huh. this is this is happening in conjunction um so uh if you do not want to be hit by it you need to consider your positioning the only safe place is in the dark gray area trench okay so I'm not flying now, I've decided. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna go, you're gonna go ahead and land there. And, Correct. Uh, fair enough, okay. Uh, Trill, you're up. It's your chance to kill something. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have the box in my hand, so I don't have my weapon, I suppose. Uh, I was, I was no, the box. you don't, but yeah. free action to drop it and then part of a move action to draw it. Should I drop it? 
<laughs> the things we're getting here. Is... Okay, well, uh, I suppose I I do that. I I put it on the on the floor. Okay. I get my weapon out, but I will I will use uh, my other action to give my drone a second action. So he will move with his. He has a mod that's called um, jump jets. Okay, nice. So he can jump this this green stuff and just go and hit this guy. He awesome. will try. Now, nice. Now I, I want to just clarify that you do still have movement available to you as Trill, right? Because you used a move action to draw. You can draw as part of oh, yeah. movement, so you can get into safety if you would yeah, like yeah yeah true and thank you uh, trill i just wanted you to know that you have a friend who has donated one advantage to you awesome uh, <laughs> and other friends have donated two more re-rolls to the group awesome. nice. not you adam oh, you're not included dang uh, it. you don't need our help um <laughs> <laughs> so i can get here i think next yes. to wisp so i yep. do that all right very good and, and then you said uh, gertie my, has a, an attack yeah he has an attack he has a magma sledge. Uh, I I can't say the other word. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but it's like the a big magma hammer. sledge. Sounds good. <laughs> so he has a plus seven. Um, I may use this advantage maybe. Yeah, now that I have it, so I will. So, oh, okay. He got he got a um, fifteen plus seven. So that will hit. That will hit. Okay. It's 1d10 plus 7. Oh, that's, a, that's not a small amount of damage. You got that yeah. old d10 rolling. Yeah. So, 14. Okay. Yeah, so Gertie gets in there and just, like, I, I assume this is, like, some sort of device that kind of comes out of its body and, yeah. like, lights up with, with, like, laser red energy. Just <laughs> kind of slices through the bones here of this thing. How much damage did you say that was total? 14. 14. That, that's great. For it's a uh, bludgeoning. It's like a hammer. Oh, it's bludgeoning. Actually. Okay, yeah. I got you. Great. <laughs> um, so it's not a laser. It's a smasher. Yeah. You just smash into those bones, leaving some extra pock marks in the bones. Wisp, you are up. All right. Can I move through my allies, right? Yes, you can. All right. So I'm going to do a trick attack as a standard action. Nice. And and the move part of that will be to just move up to the front edge here. So you say as a standard action, do you have quick trick? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. So quick trick. So I'll move, use the move part to go there. Um, can I draw a weapon as part of that? Or um, Sure. I can't remember. Yeah. They, they changed the rules on that actually at some point. But... Because you just moved. Uh, well, yes, you can. Okay, um, I want to make a alien archive check to see if I know anything about these things, these creatures. Uh, so you're just doing a recall knowledge, basically? Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah, roll a... This is going to be a mysticism. Yeah, is it going to take an action? Well, if you're just doing a normal recall knowledge with no extra bonuses, then no. You said alien archive. Is that like a feat? No, it's an operative... Uh, I can't know what they're called, uh, class ability that if I, if I succeed on this, it'll be easier for me to trick them. Okay. It's just, it's just a recall knowledge check. Oh, then absolutely. Go for it. Okay. And it's mysticism. Right. Yes. Okay. So that's, um, 21. 21. All right. Um, so that, that is a success. Is there a particular piece of information that you would like to glean? Is this on, on the Vesk yeah. or the Patra? bones um i think i want to take down the purple well, no i i guess i'll shoot the ones closest to me so the vesk okay yeah. uh is there a particular thing that you want to yeah know? so so i know that non-lethal damage won't affect the undead but i want wisp to know that okay um so basically what what i'll give you with that is that there are immunities right so it's immune to cold and it has the standard range of undead immunities, which means it can't suffer from like bleed or um, right. any mind affecting type things. You know, there's a whole list of things, but yeah. you, basically what you would think an undead could be immune to, they are. You know? Right. 
and that includes non-lethal, so I'm not going to use my compliance ray. I'm going to instead draw my semi-automatic pistol to shoot him with. Mm -hmm. um, All right, so let's get the trick part of your trick attack. So yeah, that's going to be so a skill it, check, right? Yeah, so it's stealth, and I have a I have a plus two because I succeeded on the non. Okay. So that's uh, 26. 26 is enough to succeed on the trick. Okay. So he's flat-footed against my attack. Then. Indeed. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, attack is only 13. 13. So close with the flat-footed, but not close enough. I'll need to re-roll it, I think, then. You're going to take that advantage? Yeah. All right, let's get that re-roll. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so that's two better. Well, that's enough. <laughs> that's, that's what right. you needed. Uh, All right. So that's a successful trick attack. All right. So then I get uh, 1d6 plus 2 plus 3d8. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's just 18. 18. Wow, wow, wow. And now do you um, impose any conditions here? Are you at debilitating trick, right? I think you should uh, have that. Yeah, just the basic one for fifth uh, level. So. so would you like to do off target or flat footed for the round? Um, does he have a ranged weapon? He does. Then I guess I'll do off target. Off target. All right. Very good trick attack there. Uh, great turn. You said this is the first time you played Starfinder. I don't believe you. Yes, but I still have a I still have a move action. You do still have a move action because of the off target, or I mean because uh, of the quick trick, right? right? So I'm going to use that to activate my uh, cloaking field and and stealth to hide. Goodness gracious, operatives, man! I tell you, tell you, operatives. Uh, my hide my hide's only eighteen. But. Uh, so that's probably not going to be enough. Let's see here. No, that is not enough. So the hide is unsuccessful, but the rest of your turn was was pure gas, my friend. All right, Alice, you're up. Get him. All righty. So Alice, seeing this, um, she saw the uh, the drone jump over, and she's like, "I can do that too." Um, <laughs> she's gonna also. she's gonna jet over to the other side, and the rest of you might be a little scared if she goes over top of you. Um, just like, I hope she doesn't fall on us. Um, <laughs> and she is going to land in front. And as she flies over, she's going to pull up her moat, which turns into this glowing trident. Um, yes. and she Hilarion. is just going to slice into, um, this skeleton. And that is a 18 to hit. That will hit. All right. And give Meets beats, so I'll say. Oh, this is all business. This one. She is. She's a corporate agent. Four. Yeah. 13, 13 points of damage. 13 points of bludgeoning damage, right? Um, I. Or, well, what, what's your weapon? How does this your is solarium mode? solar mo weapon. And right. I think right now, because it's. Well, well you, you can form it to be bludgeoning, uh, slashing, or piercing. It just mm -hmm. depends on the form that it takes. Yeah. What does Alice's yeah. solarium weapon look like? So it's usually a trident. Um, so that would be piercing. piercing. Which, mm, That's okay. Um, it, and then it, this it, is not Pathfinder. Don't get confused. I know. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, also, that doesn't matter. Not, be quiet. It's okay. also, <laughs> <laughs> you tell him. Because she started attuning, um, it's also going to do an additional two fire damage. So it's um, 13 piercing plus two fire. That's great. So 15 total damage there. Um, and you guys have put quite a hurting on this uh, this first vest that is off target right here at the front. Um, great job, Alice. And Burdock, you are up. The celebrity chef. Yeah. All right. So uh, I am not a melee person. Uh, you know, I'm a lover, not a fighter. And... All I really have other than that is a compliance race. So I've got I've got some creative creative juices uh, in the stew pot here. I want to know 
if I can drive that vehicle as a tiny creature. Yeah. Uh, so just, I'll, I won't even make you roll a perception. The vehicle is clearly out of commission. Has been. No. Yeah. Has that's been not like, cool. Well, it's been buffeted by this shriek, like nonstop, you know. All right. Uh, I was, maybe you can see where I was going, but I was hoping that Trill and I could get in there and ram these undead with the vehicle. I mean, that would be really cool. That would be cool. Would be we'll really talk cool. about it, how cool yeah. it would have been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sidebar. <laughs> yeah. That would have been awesome. So uh, the next best thing I can do, I guess, is to just move into this trench to avoid <laughs> getting hurt more. <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it. Okay, so just do a move, dive into the trench, take yep. cover. Like any good celebrity chef. Trill, yep. you're up. <laughs> All right, uh, it is my turn. And at the beginning of my turn, uh, I would like to tell Triel, uh, my, my, my better half, uh, <laughs> that you have two advantages oh, that have been wow. to you. Nice. Uh, and we currently have three uh, player re-rolls, so smoke them if you got them, uh, because, because now's the time. Don't tempt me with a good uh, time, man. I, I, I won't. All right. Uh, okay, so in this time, let's see, where can I get? So I'm gonna keep this very simple. Uh, Trill uh, being battered uh, by so so much debris um, goes Yahoo and jumps into the trench. And as she does, uh, she sights down her uh, solar uh, pistol and she says, "Get him, boys!" Uh, um, and I'm using the get him ability, uh, particularly you see a little like red dot of her deadly aim uh, show up on the, uh, she's protecting Gertie. She wants this this foe with Gertie to be the focus. So okay. got a little, uh, little get him on the skeletal yep. patra. So ever, that means that everybody has a plus one to attack rolls made against that creature. Very nice. That's, envoy that's doing that's envoy right. things. <laughs> Uh, so now it's these three vests turn. All right. All right. Here we go. I think we're just going to surround Alice with the vest. I mean, because why not? Fine. You know, it's a you got a big giant walrus coming at me with a with the solar <laughs> weapon. What else are they going to do? So um, as the two that had to move close are going to use their move actions to switch from hunting rifles to their claws. Uh, and the one that's directly in front of you will also switch from hunting rifle to claw. And so you're going to get a total of four attacks. All right. So we're going to start with the one that's directly on you. Uh, actually, it's only going to be three because they all had to switch grips. So nobody can do a full attack. So it's just going to be singular attacks from each of these vests. All right. So the first one is an 18 to hit your KAC. That's not going to make it. That's not gonna get it, okay. Next one is a 20 to hit your KAC. That's gonna hit. All right, go ahead and take 12 piercing damage for me. All right, one more, one more, here we go. And that is gonna be a 21, so that will hit, and we're looking at 15 slashing damage. Both of those were slashing damage, not piercing. So total 27 damage is dealt to Alice this turn. Round two, I need everybody that's not in the trench, so I guess that's Alice and Gertrude mm -hmm. to roll reflex saves as this shriek continues to pummel you with shrapnel from the surface of this planet. Uh, it's not great, so 10. That is not great. You are correct. Uh, what about uh, Alice? I got a 21. All right, so you're you're good. Gertrude is going to be off target and is going to take okay five points of bludgeoning damage. Okay, he has damage reduction, so four. Okay, there you go. You got that DR working yeah. for you. <laughs> Gertrude's what's up? I see why you're trying That's to show, show us out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that is the top of round two. Maple, we're back to you as you are nice. not flying. As yeah. not to get hit by the shriek. I'm hiding. Um, I'm going to go ahead and attack the one next to Gertie that I was getting on. I'm going to use, this time, something that will actually work, ectoplasmic, 
ectoplasmic snare. Okay. Um, I have to hit its uh, EAC first. It's a bridge attack roll. So let's see, seventeen plus uh, blah, 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 six is twenty. You know, something twenty one, twenty two. There, plus one and forget them. Yeah. All right. That is definitely a hit. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, okay. And then that is two d six bludgeoning. Actually, a couple things happen. So, um, a tendril of ectoplasm snares the creature. Um, oh, once it once it hits, uh, they are entangled for the duration. Oh. Um, and it is grappled and takes two d six bludgeoning dam- damage each round. It remains so. So does it get the damage now, or does it get the damage at the start of its turn? Um, it sounds like to me that it takes damage this every turn round. and will continue okay. to take damage on your turn. Okay, so it every, starts with every... a six damage for now. Six damage. Wow. Okay. And entangled. Yes. How many rounds? Um, it says uh, up the uh, concentration, so as long as I do it. And I'm, as, as long as, as I'm... Ju- Within, as long as I'm within range. So you just have to maintain it as your action. Just Mm -hmm. keep those, keep that going. Yes. Nice. All right. Sounds good. I mean, that's free damage and entangled. Mm -hmm. Great, great spell cast there. That one actually works. Michelle, good job. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I did something today. The the entangled (laughs) target, uh, the entangled and get them. Patra's turn, who's just going to have a lot of trouble trying to hit Gert Tree here. Uh, I think we're going to try to focus the attack and just do a single attack rather than a full attack with a bite on okay. the metal hull of Gert Tree. <laughs> we'll see how that does. That's a 13 on that. No, it fails. <laughs> just the, the, the Patra just breaks a fang trying to <laughs> bite on the <laughs> the shell of Gertrude uh and yeah Gertrude yeah like I feel like Gertrude Gertie. just like winks with that oh, weird Gertie. like black Gertie. dome Gertie. face just like yeah <laughs> yeah he winks at him like <laughs> better luck next time um <laughs> yeah so that's the Patra's turn terrible terrible there Trill you're up okay so uh just a question anyone um it has a uh, an energy weapon who's next to me no um an energy weapon so anything that's not that's doing any kind of like yeah type damage other than mm-hmm. conne- uh bludgeoning pu- yeah mine my, my i have a laser pistol yeah, so you're doing <laughs> you have it you have damage. it in your in your hand at the moment yeah it's in my hand right okay. now so i will do i have um cover here to to shoot to uh to this guy Actually, you have a, a straight shot from with that angle, yes. Okay, I, I don't have cover. I'm fine, okay. You're right, correct. So I will use my mechanic trick overcharge. So I will overcharge my weapon. Uh, that will give me an extra D6 if I hit. Correct. Um, I will use my advantage. Because there you not? go. Yeah, so, go for it. Okay. Okay, that will be a 16 or 18. This, that is the a, no, the a note eight. on your advantage is from your your good friend, Professor Marlock. Oh, <laughs> I assume you know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Professor yeah. Marlock, you have made it so she can hit this Patra. Oh, off. amazing. <laughs> yes, great job. Uh, yeah. So that is a hit. So with that an will, overcharged shot. That would be um, 1d8 plus four and one d6 so all right 11 11 total damage okay still okay and i will use my move action to use my overcharge uh on trill's weapon so you have the d6 too Ooh, thank you very nice, very nice. i accept the only uh, thing is uh, you use uh three times the amount of um Ammo. Battery Ammunition. charges. Yeah. yeah. How long could this combat yeah. last? I ask you. <laughs> and oh, my don't drone... tempt me with a good time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> my drone will will try to hit this guy. Okay, great, great turn there, Trio. Uh, Wisp, we're back to you. He has to. He has to hit the drone. Has to hit. He has his 
Oh, he's action. got his turn, right? The drone's got yeah. the turn. All right, let's get it. He will try. So Go, Gertie, go. Ooh, 18? I think 18 is a hit, miss. yes. Yeah, okay. That entangled doing work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 11, another 11. Oh, man, so close. So close. All right. Some great, great damage output there on that turn from Trio and Gertrude. Wisp, what you got? Uh, you got Alice in front of you now on this one that you had targeted before, which would provide yeah. a little cover, but you do have a straight shot on the one that's to her, her left, bottom left. Yeah, she's in a little bit of trouble there. So we need to get these guys off of her, I think. Um, I'm actually going to expose myself in an attempt to kind of draw their attention so they stop killing her. Okay, so um, I just kind of move right up into the business. So I'm gonna I'm gonna trick I'm gonna quick trick and use the movement to come up here next to this guy. Right. And then okay. um I'm gonna try to trick him. All right. 33. Oh, you're, you're good. Golden. So he's flat footed against me. I'm going to punch him. Just punch him right so, in the, right yeah, in his I've, stupid I've vest got, bone face. Yeah, I've got improved on arm strike and death strike. So I can punch him for real damage and try and hurt him. <laughs> so I rolled poorly and got a 15. A 15 against KAC. Yeah. Do you have a reroll? <laughs> I'm, um, <laughs> I don't know, we, do I? We have two team rerolls, re so use one by all means. All right. I'll use one. And that will hit. So that's uh, three better than that. So eight. Yeah. So you're good. You're good. Yeah. So it's 1d6 plus three plus 3d8. Ooh, we that trick attack when it lands just it just sounds like so much so many dice just Ooh, uh 23 <laughs> holy cow uh yeah you you knock out more than a couple ribs on this one uh <laughs> just walk up and just punch them right there in the rib cage breaking a few of those vesk ribs all right and um and I am not going to hide because I kind of want him to attack me. Yeah, you want him to come at you. Out. All right. All right, Alice, you are up. All right. I'm going to focus on the one north of me, and I'm going to swing my trident around again. And you see it just fully engulfed in flames at this point um, as I do the full plasma sheath. Nice. And that's going to be a 17 to hit. 17 to hit. Which one are you uh, attacking? The one to the north of me. The one to the north of you. Uh, that's going to miss with that 17. Sorry. Oh, so it just, <laughs> just kind of flies right over. Uh, Could have been a contender. Burdock. All right. Um, I want to quickly ask Alice how uh, how she's feeling. Ouch. How she... Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, move up here. Uh, man. All right. I feel like my two options are to either give Gertie flanking or to. Uh, to help Alice recover some stamina. Those are both good choices, <laughs> but the um, decision is yours, my friend. Yeah. I feel like Gertie might have this in the bag, so I'm gonna come up here. Is this black stuff near the Patra a hole? Yes. Okay. Oops. I'm gonna move up here, and then I'm going to uh, give Alice an inspiring boost which nice. uh, I believe is 15, uh, 16 plus 1d6. 
of stamina recovered. D6. Uh, so that's 18 stamina you recover. Nice. So you come, what do you say to her? I say, it... hold the line. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, our, <laughs> all right, Alice. So that's uh, some stamina back to you. Kind of back in the fight here. Trill, you're up. All right. I'm lifting the veil because something must be said. We are only $275 away from having raised 5K. And when I announced this in chat, Jasper's game day uh, said that they will give, if somebody donates that full amount of 275K, uh, 275K. $275,000. Yeah, yeah, dollars. It was just it's ch chump change, honestly. Uh, of $275, they will receive the Dogmite Games uh, Pathfinder, <sighs> like a beautiful custom Pathfinder GM screen. So consider it. Okay, it's a work fail. of art. Yeah, it's it's incredible. So consider it um, because it, it would be awesome to have. Um, I will now, as Trill, who's Ann, uh, I will I will do a full attack round of attacks. That that's what they're called. Full attack okay. round um, of attacks. That of are full. attacks. No snacks. Give them wax. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Uh, so a twenty-two to hit uh, for my first trick. Um, uh, with my with my uh, solar so, solar gun, yes. solar ray gun, yes. solar that uh, that is a hit, and remember that it is overcharged. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. So I'm gonna roll three d4 plus a d6. And which one are you attacking, Trill? Um, I am attacking uh, the one that has get him on it, the paw trap. Got it. All right. Okay. So uh, let's see. That's five plus another. Okay, seven. Uh, plus five is uh, 12, damn, damn, on the first attack. 12, damn, damn, uh, got and it. And that's fire, damn, damn. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Damn! Okay. All right, uh, how about Cowabunga? Um, let's see, 17 to hit on the second one. And this is going against EAC, correct? Yeah, All yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, you get it, yeah, you get oh, it, shit. you get it. Okay. Am I still overcharged? No, just, no, still, just one no. shot. Oh, just the yeah. just the one. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and it was just the one d six that time, mm -hmm. or was it? Yeah. Okay, one right, that's fine. Listen, I'm not trying to be greedy. I'm just trying to be accurate. Look, you <laughs> right. got the hit. Um. Okay. Sweet. Max damage. Um. So that's twelve. Uh. Twelve laser pistol. Damn. Damn. All right. Well, that is exactly eleven more damn damn than you needed. Yay! As the skeletal Patra gets blasted into ash and bone, and what's left falls back into the pit from whence it came. Yeah. Uh, great, great, great. So that's one down. Awesome. Three so she to go. Uh, just pops up over the side with her little pistol, um, gets the the red mark on its skull, and just fires quickly. <laughs> It, that was so anticlimactic. I don't. Juice, <laughs> juice. Uh, would be more. Yeah. And I'll... she kind of like bounces backwards because she's not strong she's small well that overcharge just kind of that kickback you weren't expecting yeah, yeah. on the overcharge <laughs> oh gosh this is yeah. okay all right trail shit awesome all right so um <laughs> all right it is the skeletal vest turn Ooh. all right so two of them are going to maintain their uh assault on alice and that there one is go. no longer off target, right? The one that you hit. Yeah, but, you, but this this target. one is though. Right. All right. So we'll start with the two that are on Alice. These are going to be full attacks at you, Alice. All right. Here we go. Come on. Let me just get that natural twenty. That's what I want with these claws. Just want one. Just want one tonight. Uh, no, that's not going to do it, especially when I get a natural one on the first attack. <laughs> Uh, follow that up with a natural two. Uh, for so the nice. first one just like just whiffs all around, like just basically claws the air over his head. I uh, love the way you look. <laughs> let's see if the next one can do any better. Probably not, but we're gonna try. Here we go. Okay, uh, 17 is gonna miss your KC, huh? All right, so the both of those are gonna miss with 17 and 12. So they're oh wow beautiful <laughs> beautiful 
Uh, that one's for Heath right there. Um, all right. So good job withstanding terrible attacks, Alice. Uh, you just had to stand there and they just missed all the time. So um, next up, we got the one that is on uh, Wisp. And because off target, I'm just going to go with a single attack here to try and see if I can get a hit. 24 against KAC. That's gonna, oh, uh, I'm sorry, that'd be a 22 against KAC. And 21. All right, gotcha with, so that's gonna be 10 points of slashing damage. And I need everybody that is not in the trench to roll me a reflex save. And it seems like this shriek is building up in intensity. No. Getting a little rougher. Uh -oh. I heard these were random encounters. I feel like very targeted by this shriek. Maybe. <laughs> all right. So uh, let's start 11. with. Oh, okay. But all right. All right. That's not good. You're going to continue to be off target. Remember, that's minus two to your tax. And now you're going to take instead of 1d6, you're taking 2d6 points of damage. So that's going to be eight points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, Alice, what was your reflex? 17. All right. You're good. Wisp. I get cover from the Mountain of Awesome that is Alice, right? Uh, no. Yeah. But no. your evasion will still kick in if you succeed. I got 21. All right, you're good. You're totally uh, good. Gertie had 18. Uh, what's that? Gertie had a what? 18. 18 is good. 18. So uh, only Burdock takes the damage this time. Maple. How much was that, Adam? It was eight points of okay. bludgeoning damage. Maple, we're back to you. All right. I'm going to hit the one that is uh, off target with a caustic conversion. So I need to succeed on an EAC range roll attack. That's good. Um, that is a wow. Uh, 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 twenty-five to hit. That's gonna get it. Yay! Okay, so that's four D four acid damage. Come on, come Oop. on. Um, that is four, five, six uh, plus six is twelve, thirteen total, and it takes an additional five acid damage at the end of its turn for each round for the spell's duration, which is. Unclear. One round plus one round slash three levels. Uh, two rounds. Okay, so it's going to take an extra five for two more rounds. I'm coming out with that witch warper goodness right there, just like <laughs> ripping realities. Um, okay, it's the pot. Oh, no, it's not. That's dead. It's at the bottom of the pit. Trill, you're up. Okay. Um, do I have cover against these guys now? Um, yeah, you're gonna have to shoot through a little bit of cover. Mm, okay, uh, I, I don't see how I could move and, and avoid the cover, so I will just overcharge and shoot. Okay, okay, oh, 17 on the die. Just don't get it, yeah, yeah. so. Twelve points of damage. That's with the overcharge, right? Yeah, and right. I will use my uh, other move action to make my drone move two times, so he can go and flank with Alice. Um, so he will go through here. Mm -hmm, I think he can, mm -hmm. right? Yep, yep. Yeah, if you can get around the back there, yep, sure thing. So you're going to get a flank there for yeah, Alice. So he just yeah. moves two times. Gertie just doing the work up in here, just doing work. <laughs> Wisp, you're up. I'm flanking now too with uh Gertie. You are flanking with yeah. with Gertie, yes. And right, then I, I don't think I'll move then. Actually I want to get out of the way so people can shoot these guys. So if I come around here as the movement of trick attack. Uh, draw well, why not? Why point. not? Let me just suggest something since, yeah. since you're new. Why not attack first with your quick trick and then move after? Use your movement. That's a, after. That's a great idea. So See, I, I, will, I have my nice moments, ladies. I will do that. So I'll, uh, I'll attack them with, with quick, quick trick. So trying to trick them. Um, that's 27. Got it. All right. And then the attack is a natural. So. It's natural what? One? One. Oh, man. Bummer. Yeah, that's a miss, unfortunately. Uh, are you going to then move? Uh, yeah, I'm going to 
I'm going to stealth as part of that move. So with the cloaking field, I can just hide oh, right, right. just out in the middle of nowhere. So nice. I'm going to do that. That's cool. Um, that's 34. I don't think I can even beat that, but I'm going to try. No, not with a seven on the die. So you are hidden, which is going to come around here. Yeah. Okay. So you we get, we got flanking for two creatures, two creatures for Alice. Um. All right, and Alice, that means it's your turn. So you have kind of a choice here of two creatures that are both flanked. All right, Adam. Question: Can you yes. full attack on different creatures? You absolutely can. Okay. Are they looking hurt enough? That makes sense. Um. Yeah. This one to the south looks pretty bad. Pretty bad. Um. Looks right. like it wouldn't take much to knock it over. So let's try this, and it's a minus four. All right. Uh, so... Well, it's going to be a minus two because of the yeah. flame. Well, right, 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 right. Right. Yep. Oh, okay. Um. So that's a 25 to hit. On the okay, yeah, yeah, you got one. it. Yeah, yeah, you got it. And that's uh, 11 points of damage. Yeah, so your uh, trident just like like gets into like between the two remaining ribs, like in between the prongs, and then uses that middle prong to like twist and break the spine. And it just crumbles into a pile of bones right at your feet as you successfully destroy this vesk with your first she's, attack. She's gonna yes. kind of follow through straight into the other one. Cause that is a 25, my dude. Oh um, man, yeah. So you're coming out, you're like using the, the bones against other bones and just like Yes. And bone on bone on bone. Is max damage, 15 points of damage straight Whoa, into the nice. second one. Oh no, no, no. 17 points of damage straight into the second one because I got that Ooh. fire bonus. You got that plasma sheath going. 17 points of damage, and that one looks like it takes took a pretty good hit. Very nice turn there. Yeah. Trill's eyes just turn into hard eyes as she's watching Alice and she's just like Wow, what a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> what a walrus. All right, Burdock, can you help clean up this situation? I think you guys got this handled at this point. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Would a serum of healing uh, harm these undead creatures? <laughs> um... I don't know if it really works that way. It's for charity, Adam. Yeah. No. Yeah, Final Fantasy rolls. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Um, if I can draw my tactical star knife Ooh. while moving into this difficult terrain here. Can do that, yes. Then I will roll an attack. I got an 18. That'll get it. All right. Meets my, meat. <laughs> my damage is, uh, let's see. 1d4 plus 1. No, it's actually <laughs> 1d4 minus 2. Why? Minimum, <laughs> minimum 1. It's a minimum of 1. Yep. Oh, because so your strength. See. Yeah. Yeah. I rolled a 4. All right. So that's two, two damage. points of damage. Every little bit counts. Just putting a little extra spice on the dish there. Hell yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, Burdock. All right, Burdock. I see you. You're showing off your knife skills. I like it. Trill, Thorn in its side. <laughs> All right. Uh, seeing uh, and being totally inspired uh, by Alice, she's like, not today, uh, and takes a full round of attack actions on... Uh, oh my gosh, my mouse is on the wrong computer. Okay, one second. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this one here, which I believe I can see. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm just going to roll both attack, and then if they both hit, I'll roll all the damage at once. Okay. All right. That is, there's no way that's hidden. Uh, that's a solid nine. No. Nope. Uh, I will use, I could use a reroll. There you go. That's a 12. Nope. Okay. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Okay, great. Uh, next attack. Okay, that's better. That's better. Uh, so with, I take the reduction because it's a full attack. Um, so that's a 20 to hit. A 20 to hit. E uh, EAC? Oh, thank goodness it's EAC because got the, you got that cover there from your allies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. with all that, you meet beat. That's a hit. Yeah. 
All right, awesome. So let's see, four plus three is seven, plus two is nine, damn, damn. Very, very good. All right, y'all are, are keeping it going here. Uh, it's the two Vesk turns. Um, well, since Wisp vanished before their eyes, they're going to focus their attacks on Alice. Alice, you're just, you know, the walrus tank here, but you're doing good because they suck and miss all the time. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not use roll 20. I'm going to take my own advice. Don't get down on yourselves, roll, Adam. Roll 20. All right, here we go. Ready? All right, that's a 22 on the first one. That's going to hit. On the second one, that's going to miss. On the third attack, that's another 22. And the fourth attack is a 25. So that's three hits total, right? So that's going to deal a good bit of damage to you. That's going to be 36 points of slashing damage total as all three of these just, <laughs> just unleash a, fury, a flurry of claw attacks on Alice. How you doing? How you doing, Alice? You all right? You still, you still good? Muted. You're muted. I'm still up. Still up. All right. That's all that nice. matters. Except. Well, that, except you're going to hit me with it. Yeah, except it's <laughs> round four and the shriek is happening. So I need everybody to roll those reflex saves that are out of the trench. So we'll start with you, Burdock. What's your reflex? 16. 16. You're good. Alice. 11. That's not good. That's going to be another 3d6 of damage to you. Oof. Man, it's for charity. Eleven points uh, of bludgeoning damage. What about Wisp? Sixteen. You're good. What about Gertrude? Fifteen. Oh, just meets nope. beats with that fifteen. All right, Alice, are you still up? You got a couple. I see a little sliver of a green bar there. Oh All my right. gosh! I'm All here right. for you. <laughs> All right, <laughs> maybe healer there, Burdock. <laughs> Uh, you see Alice's flesh is just punctured with like all these like random pieces of metal and, oh. and debris and brush and everything like that. Even perhaps a few uh, uh, Skittlemander chunks perhaps might have, <laughs> have made their way into this debris field. What are you going to do, Maple? Uh, wow, I need to help. Um, so I'm going to go boop, 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 right here. Yep. Get out of this ditch for like three goddamn seconds. Okay, and I'm gonna cast on this middle person or slug person here. <laughs> that is like the skeleton. Uh, junk shard. So I have uh, my own shriek. <laughs> <laughs> I do. This guy rips open and a bunch of junk from a different dimension comes out. What's that junk you Amazing. say? Just like a bunch of really sharp D20s all made of metal. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they have to do a uh, reflex save, please. Okay. Against um, they're not 16. terribly great at that, I'll tell you. Uh, 16, you say? Yes. Uh, well, a 20, a dirty 20 is going to get it. No. So okay, take they take half, half damage. damage. So it's fine. Yeah. You made me sad for just a second. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So they take five. Okay, five damage. All right. So that one's nice. looking a little. Uh, that was to both of them? Just the one, the middle, the, the middle yeah, one. So, uh, that one's looking a little rough. In fact, they're both looking kind of like, you might say bloodied if they had blood, you know, so they, they look a little boned. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. That one got me. That one got you. All right. <laughs> perfect. Trail, you're up. Okay. So I will uh, overcharge and shoot with cover. All right. Which one? Uh, this one. All right. Perfect. Okay. Come on. Hit. Ooh, okay, 14 on the die. That's going to get it. Okay, so. Oh, not great. Um, nine. With my move action, I will overcharge Trill's weapon again. Very nice. A and extra, a little extra overcharge for Trill. And Gerti will hit the, the same. The, mm -hmm. He's flanking, so correct. Do it, another for Come another on, 14 on the die. Yeah, that oh, way. Yeah, I'm don't even worry that. about the math. You got it. The 14 okay. will get you there. Okay, mm, so 10. 10 points of damage. Ten, yeah. 
is exactly the remaining HP okay. <laughs> on this vest. There is one left. Gertie got a kill. Awesome. Wink. Nice. We have to save Alice. She's, uh, she's well, protecting I mean, us. Yeah. <laughs> she's almost into her hit points. <laughs> Uh, okay, very good turn there. Wisp, you're up. There's one left here looking pretty bad. You know, you might be able to clean this up. What you got? I can move into the guy's. He's dead, right? So mm -hmm. I can stand on him. I'll try and trick him. That's a 33. Yes, sir. Nice. And Oof. I'll try to pistol whip him. Get him. Oh, much better. So that's a 26. 26 will hit. Ooh, 10. 17. Ooh, so close. I like the sound of that. Yeah, it's like setting it up for Alice to get her vengeance here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Alice. Oh, thing is like wobbling much. on one femur. Can I'm you... very sad that there are so many people right next to me because otherwise, but Alice would not do that. Do it. Um, <laughs> I am not super do it because we Listen, we got a wrap, so you might as well go out with the play. All right, fine. Alice is not paying attention. She's on her last, like, she's barely holding on. Four hit points, guys. Um, and she just like swings her trident around, but the, instead of the trident, it explodes explodes into this supernova of photon energy doing 24 uh fire damage to everything within 10 feet of her <laughs> alice has just had enough and she's like she was like quiet this whole time but she she's gonna so you times. know she's go walk like, in here <gasps> explodes <laughs> with fire in all directions certainly enough to uh destroy the vest and i think everybody else can survive that blast the reflex save right it is. it is yeah so I, I I got 26 to avoid your right. So and you got a measure robot. too. So you take no damage. I just duck. Yeah, <laughs> see it coming. You see it coming. You know, uh, Burdock, you get a little singed. You know, you get a little, yep. a little smoked. Uh, Gertie kind of shorts a little bit, but it's fine. I think everybody can survive that blast there. Um, and you successfully deal with the bones. I imagine you scoop up the blacks the black box and get the hell out of dodge from this shriek um and back into the big trunk the tree trunk and back towards your trucks and head back to reha to report that you have succeeded in yet another successful starfinder mission and she is very pleased and cracks open a bottle of fine wine just for the six of you and must let me say from adam to you as players this has been an absolute joy so much fun playing with you guys killed it congratulations Aww, thank you thank so you. much thank you seriously this was a total blast and it's not over yet in 15 minutes we are going to be back with our last pathfinder game of the event we only have i think 255 dollars left to our goal uh so please consider donating i'll have the new uh donation goal uh things up for the next group very shortly so you'll be able to see how you can help and hinder them all for a good cause all right guys thank you again for being a part of this and we'll see you in just a few minutes we'll see you